Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I am so excited to have on a 34-year-old from Barrie, Ontario. His hockey journey took him to Canada, the USA, Germany, and Wales. With the St. Mary's University, whatever they are, is in the CIS. He was an all-rookie team member, a three-time first-team all-star, a three-time first-team all-Canadian University Cup MVP, CIS Defenseman of the Year, CIS MVP and University Cup champion. And in the East Coast Hockey League, he was an all-rookie and a second-team all-star. <clears throat> now, with the Cardiff Devils, 219 points and 209 games played. Four-time first-team all-star, four-time Defenseman of the Year. That's for the whole league, folks. Two-time Challenge Cup winner one-time playoff champion and a two-time league champion and also a champion with the Stony Creek Generals, uh, best known as a lookalike for Marv from Home Alone. Welcome to the podcast, Andrew Hotham. Wally, it's great to see you. That was a really long intro, dude. I have, of all the guys on so far, never had a guy with that much stuff written under their stats on Elite Prospects. I'm not going to lie, I actually just zoned out and was trying to get Marv to uh, come up and sit on me, but. Oh, that's the dog. How old's the dog now? You've had him a while. Yeah, he's four. He's just a young guy still. Yeah, you guys he's got him. He's just a grumpy old man, though. I guess you guys got him right around just after the last time I would have seen you, probably. Um, Jeepers, creepers, you looked frozen there for a second. But anyways, I get into how we know each other first. Yeah. And, um, well, there's quite a bit here. We did MBAs together in Cardiff, Wales at the Met. We did? Yeah. Did you, did you enjoy your time at the Met? We, we weren't the same uh, mage or whatever you call it, pathway for the MBA, though. Eh? You, were, you were the money guy. I know. Uh, when I listen to Marcy on here and you guys doing the project management, I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, why did I do finance? I should have just done project management. It was just... Then you could have been in all the classes with us too. The yeah, carpooling would have been easier. And not have my one paper plagiarized like 40%. <laughs> oh, Group man. project. Group project. So, so yeah. someone's cheated off of you? No, we, it was a group project. There was five of us that, or four of us writing it. And uh, let's, lack of a better term, I was the only English first speaker and writer. And they didn't want me to do anything other than the introduction. So I'm like, now I remember. I'm like, okay, like I can do the main part. I can, they're like, no, you just do the introduction. So then uh, when you have to hand it in online, it tells you what your uh, plagiarism percentage is. And I think we were like 40%. Pretty so high. I went on Pretty high. <laughs> and the girl who wanted to run it, her part was like 90% plagiarized. And I remember going to the teacher whatever you call them over there i'm like listen like this is really plagiarized i'm like this like what can we do to fix this like my part was like maybe like half a percent plagiarized because it had two words that were together and she's like was it under 50 percent?" i'm like yeah it was like 40 or high 30 she's like oh that's fine I'm like that's fine i'm <laughs> like i thought this is supposed to be a, an mba like are you not supposed to have your original ideas here and write something like you're telling me I could have plagiarized this whole time, this whole year? <laughs> well, yeah, no, you, but you were the one that ev evened out the numbers, right? If they would have handed it 90%, they would have got caught. But you were there to, to, to get the team through. <laughs> That's good. My 0.5% worked its way through. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we did spend a lot of time together at that school, which it was, it was fun, eh? Like, we, we had a good time. You remember all those uh, horrible pizzas we used to get in the, uh, in the bar? We had them so often, but they were, oh, there it's the food wasn't that great there, was it? Really? Well, every time we went in for a beer, we just end up going to the bar every day at lunch. Thirty percent these... off with Kumar's ID. <laughs> yeah, and they had those uh, those because you could only get so much food there, and one of the things was pizza, and I I can't remember what the other one was, but we used to get the pizza all the time, and it was just like this frozen if, pizza. If Florida would have known how I was eating, eh? because that first year I got to live and then the second year he wasn't letting me live at all. I wasn't allowed to eat anything in that summer. The pizza well, sounds pretty you, good back then. Well, you huh? had such a great day, great year, your first year. You really put the, the tight handles on the second. <laughs> um, 
Well, I guess that first year I had a decent year because uh, me and you were on the power play together. We ran the uh, power play together until Lord realized what he had and took you took you for himself. Were we allowed on the uh, on the first power play unit that year? No, or we was, started on no, the second. We were the second unit, and we went that whole. We went most of the first year together. It was just it was us, and we we did all right. Um, but uh, this is probably my favorite way we know each other because it just came to me it wasn't on the notes until two seconds ago when i was putting colby to sleep and i said <clears throat> you know who's coming on the pod tonight and he's like no who i'm like the guy that taught you boobies <laughs> do you remember that was that from the calendar we had there you yes there was a, a a calendar on your wall you and hendo were both single men at the time and you had a calendar of um girls um and then when colby and i would come over to hang out um yeah he was i guess three he learned the word <laughs> boobies <laughs> well set the record straight i was never single in cardiff but hendo was single for a few months oh, um, we were right. just living we were living the bachelor the the bachelor life drinking our faces off and not having any yeah kids and, to take and your wife now games. We'll get into what you're doing now, but um, your wife now, I guess, wasn't living with you. You guys weren't married. You guys were just dating, right? Yeah, I think we were only dating for like six months or right. something, but I went over there. So, and then she ended up yeah. living there full time at one point, right? Yeah, she came over. Uh, what was it? My third year there. She came over for Christmas, like she did every year, and uh, she had massive layoffs with her company. So she was supposed to go home early January. And her boss sent her a message like the day before she was supposed to go home and she ended up getting laid off too. So she's like, well, I might as well just stay here for another few months. And yeah. she ended up staying for the rest of the year. And then the fourth year she, uh, she lived with us too, uh, over oh, there yeah. and we had Marv. Yeah. Dog. And now a kid, eh? And now a kid who's home with croup. He's a little sick oh, today. Croup. Yeah. I, my kids have had so. that, but that's the throat thing, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, throat, and, and who did you name everywhere. your kid after? Oh, the one and only Carl Hudson. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, no, he's one of my favorite uh, teammates ever, too. Um, Carl, what a beauty. And uh, so, you named your son what? Hudson. Hudson. Love I it. I told him he's got to uh, he's got to marry Carl's daughter. And then he's got to take her name so he can be Hudson Hudson. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. That, that would be a good, that'd be, I feel like that's, that'd be yeah, strange, strange point. name. Yeah. Well, you guys will be hanging out. I know that. So they're going to get to know each other. Um, they did. Okay. The other thing I had was, yeah, carpool and apartments ran the PP together for most of the season. I think till Lordo realized what you were doing back there and then took you to the first unit um then we also won the challenge cup which has been discussed many times on the pod but um you won a lot of times eh uh i think we only won the challenge cup twice when i was there I so was... two challenge cups i have and you won the playoffs and two league so what's your favorite one uh i'd say uh i don't know i obviously being from north america playoffs are always the biggest thing I know like winning the league was this, well, winning the Challenge Cup, winning stuff in the first year. Winning the league was such a huge thing. Uh, but I don't know, for me, playoffs, you win the last game of your season, you're the champions. Uh, for me, it, it worked out because I retired right after. So winning, winning the last game of, the, of my career, winning the, the trophy, that was kind of, that was my favorite at least. So, um, th you know what I've decided I did nowadays, I don't go in the order of my notes. I just try to feel it. So that <laughs> comes up right now is you say you won it and retired. I had you down here as why, how do you decide to retire after realistically your best year in Cardiff with 61 points in 53 games? And then you decide to shut her down. Sorry. I I'm the four time defenseman of the year. I've had enough. Well, yeah, what 25 times or keep going? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it was, uh, I don't know. For me, it was Ash and I were getting married that summer. Um, you know, 
starting to be in our early thirties, starting to look at starting a family. Um, my knees and my back would kill me every game. I couldn't take the uh, 80 games or whatever you play that, that schedule in the UK anymore. It was just, it was, my body couldn't handle it. I didn't want to move. It was just kind of a combination of things. And, you know, you yeah. just feel like you're ready. Like some guys retire when they're ready. Some retire and then regret it. I don't regret retiring at all. I'm completely fine with my decision to retire at that time. I so left let's when get it was into still where, good and what are you doing bad. now? Uh, so right now I'm an adult babysitter. Uh, also known as being a police officer in Toronto. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some of the job is, some of the job is fun. I work with, uh, another, uh, alumni, Doug Clarkson. Oh dear. And, uh, so we're on the same shift together actually in Toronto. That's ridiculous. Really? I knew that yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot so, of hockey uh, players being cops, eh? A lot. It's got a, well, we need good teams when we play the firefighters. So that's very true. If you don't beat the firefighters and. What's it's it all just about, embarrassing right? at that point. Yeah. Yeah. What's it all for? So if you play hockey, I think you get a little edge. In. Well, I think you knew you had a plan for a while because I remember like, cause we haven't chatted in a, a while other than if the random texts, but um, mm -hmm. like the last time I think we talked about this, but you were going on ride alongs and stuff like back when you were playing. So you knew what you wanted to do, right? You, it was all calculated. Yeah. yeah I went on a ride along I think even before I went to Cardiff or maybe while I was in Cardiff, but yeah, cause I've like, I've got buddies that I played with and a bunch of them became cops and they're like, it's a nice transition. You're not working at an office all day and you can still be a team. Like my, I have a, a partner and he's 23 years old, played junior C hockey in uh, uh, Grimsby peach Kings. Oh, I don't know peach if Kings. he ever, so he's, uh, he's quite proud of that. So he's 23. So it's uh shout out to no the different. Peach Kings. Oh uh, yeah. Well, he's just going to go off about Peach Kings now to me, but more so than he already does. Love it. But he, uh, but yeah. So he played hockey. Obviously, we are in a car together for 12 hours a day. It's like going to the rink again, right? And it's yeah. So it's, it's like going to the shed transition. again. Snook Stout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of beer you got there? This is a Snook Stout. From the Bayfield Brewing Company, named after Ryan O'Reilly, local hero. Oh, so there you go. Yeah, is, is that the sponsor today? That's the sponsor every time, man. They're the best. Um, gonna be going there uh, Friday with the mother-in-law um, who just crossed the border. Big news. Mother-in-law is here for the first time in uh, 17 months, I guess it's been. So uh, we're heading to the Bayfield Brewing Company. Me, mother-in-law, and the kids. Friday night. Be there. Be square. <laughs> are they gonna pull out the welcome wagon for you um actually like last you, actually last I feel time like I, you need a red carpet dude actually this is what's wild is last time i went there on their like window box out front that had the menu they had like yeah. my my logo it said proud sponsor of two ales and hockey tails and it was really cool my kids saw it it was actually quite <laughs> quite, quite cool so here's my real question for you is when are you going to do a live live show from the Bayfield brewery. brewing if i ever had the equipment and knew how to do that with a person live because i don't have the equipment is what my it team tells me all you need is a computer don't you or a microphone um microphones i guess somebody there was another word for it, a, a mixer or something or other i forget what it was called just record it on your cell phone and then post it Mm, gee, well, I, yeah, I guess I, I will do a live one like that. There's no problem there. I'm just learning as I go here, you know? Well, I feel like they've been sponsoring you already now. I feel like you got to well, give I, them a little show back. I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can here, you know, drinking beers in my shed, trying to let everybody know about them because it is the best beer around and the food's incredible. I can't wait to go there. This time I saw the neighbor table order last time, wonton nachos. Boy, did I get hot and bothered when I saw it at the table next door. I almost like reached over, but I don't even think I've heard of that. Um, it it I, it's like an nacho? Asian nacho. Yeah. Like that's what I'm talking about. It's my type of place. And they have fantastic beers. So yeah. And thanks again for sponsoring the pod. You know? <laughs> I get to catch up with all my old friends and find out what the hell happened to them. So <laughs> congratulations on becoming a cop. I know um 
it's not easy for everyone out of hockey, but you obviously had a plan and uh, executed it quite, uh, quite well. Hey. Yeah. Who would think I actually have to work nowadays? I are can't you, get by with yeah. uh, just. Are you really by. working though? Like, are you? You're you're just looking for guys like me cruising around, right? Like, just leave a, leave me alone, guys. All of you old hockey players, just leave me alone. I'm just cruising around, cru- cru- cruising on the dirt roads. Don't walk. Don't worry. I'm not a traffic guy. I, uh, <laughs> everybody I pull over starts with a warning. It, de- oh. it depends how your attitude and and what your history is. I gotcha. But or yeah, if they're uh, polite. Yeah. People make mistakes. Oh, Nobody exactly. needs to get a, a ticket for it, but that's not everyone. There's lots of guys that go out there and, and look for somebody yeah. going 51 and a 50. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, okay, better move on. Basically, all the all my old friends are cops now. It's crazy. You guys must all play together. Um, but anyways, moving on. I do, I do um, think like... I played with a guy that uh, you played with in Germany. Brunella? Yeah. Richie? Rich Bunnell play with him in uh, and, yeah, our Atlanta. Toronto, uh, our main Toronto team. Yeah. I saw the picture of you guys with like the trophy on whatever it was, Instagram. And I was like, wow, it's like, it's like all my former teammates all <laughs> on one team and they're all called cops now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Strange times. Um, okay. Fire in Toronto. I wanted to know what it was like growing up with a dad that played in the show. Uh, well, it was obviously a lot easier for me to learn <clears throat> tough. Cause he was pretty demanding on, uh, on what he wanted, uh, whether you're playing good or bad, but you know, the car rides home, he coached our team a few, a few years. Yeah. The car rides home, you know, it was kind of a, the little pointers on positional wise, what you could have done better, what you did well, uh, obviously just. So pretty oh, honest. It huge. wasn't like all negative. Pretty honest assessment. Oh yeah, yeah, dead honest. I still remember, you know, you, you see your dad sitting up there in the stands, and he'd always have this thing because obviously I, you play with me that I don't move my feet very well. So he'd sit up there with the sunflower seeds with uh, another guy, uh, John Church, and uh, popping sunflower seeds. And I knew if I wasn't playing a good game, and I was looking up there, I'm like, you would just have the head tilt. And start moving his hands in circular motion. He's like, start to pick it up. I'm like, oh god, I better start playing better, else it's gonna be a rough ride home. So, could you turn it around if you were having a tough one? Uh, that's probably not so much when I was younger. Probably yeah. not so much when I was older either. But at least that's I tried cool. harder. So at <laughs> yeah. least that showed. You know what? I you know one thing I'd say about playing with you is uh you know because this is a podcast it'll be really nice to you today but um <laughs> is literally you were probably the, the most competitive guy i played with you played with as much passion as anybody i played with you would the, my favorite games would be when you would beat a guy up score two goals have an assist you'd be screaming at the away fans and like you just have so much passion <laughs> and you just dominate games yeah i guess i lost my head a few times there playing but I, I just enjoyed that you were an offensive defenseman, but also like would beat people up. I thought it was great. Yeah, it was nice in the uh, in the start when I was allowed to fight. And then I kept getting talked to about not fighting, but. Because you were too good. <laughs> what are you going to do? They said, they said the same shit to me. I know. They said, stop oh. fighting. You Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I'm either going to go two-hand a guy in the face and take a, a few game suspension, or I'm going to go fight somebody. What do you want? Five minutes or five games? Wow. It's a pretty simple thing, right? Right. And when you wanted it, like who's going to like, why stop a guy when he's that passionate and he like, he wants to beat a guy up, let him, let him beat the guy up. Right. Yeah. He's well, for me, you know, that's the type of player I am. Let me play. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. I'm no, I, to, Lord, it was I'm pretty playing good terribly. That, eh? Then he, yeah, he was. Yeah. Other than practice, he uh, got on my ass, but you know, in games, he kind of uh, made it a little bit easier. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I thought your two relationship was one of the funniest I had seen in pro hockey, actually. <laughs> and by get on my ass, I mean break his stick over my shin pads. <laughs> Were you there for that one? Or was that after? What Was he like a player coach or was he not? Uh, No, he wasn't. So then I so, was gone. So do you ever remember that? I think we played it too in the BBT. 
where it was like in between the blue lines and everybody had a puck and you try to poke somebody's puck outside the blue lines. I still play that with Colby's team. Yeah. So we played with Lordo. So he was <laughs> just annoyed a bit. You. <laughs> so every time I would go right behind him and I'd sneak behind him <laughs> and he'd blow the whistle and I would poke it right away. So he'd be done because he just wants to, you know, he just wants to play. He just loves he it. He just handle. loves it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I would put him out within the first like three seconds and we did it like four times and he ended up just losing his shit and he just two handed my legs and broke his stick. I don't think you're allowed to do that. Eh? <laughs> no, I don't think so as a coach. But uh, we're, yeah, we're not, we're not suing anybody on this podcast, Lordo. That was just passion for the game, right? And because you, and did you guys not play together at one point? I couldn't find it. The research team could not find it, but I could have sworn you guys were like, you guys would always talk about like OKC. And I'm like, what the hell's OKC, right? So I think, uh, yeah, I think your research team needs a little better job, but no, we never played together. Oh. So he played in wheeling before I was in wheeling. So we had the same coaches and a few same players. And then he played, I think he played in OKC a year or two years before me too. Or maybe he didn't play OKC. I can't remember, but he played in Wheeling for sure before me. Oh, okay. I thought you guys played together, but your relationship yeah. with him, like it cracked me up because like he, he yeah, it was, just was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Not a chance he would sign me to Cardiff if we played together. If he knew the type of guy I was, no way he's signing me. He's not taking on oh, anybody man. questioning him. I thought it was great. Would you, you like? There'd be. I, I'm trying to think of like an example, but I can't really think of one. But it'd be like, you, you just play the music like right, just at the wrong time, or, you know. Oh, do you not remember the song I used to play for him? <laughs> I, I actually, I just remember the relationship. I don't remember an example, though. No. So I had a song for all our coaches because when I was doing the music the first few years, I'm sure I have it here. So I had one for Jamie Elson, for Todd, and then for, uh, for Lardo. We used to play it every time he walked in the room. Oh, man. I, so every time they'd walk in the room, you'd play a song and they'd know it. Would they figure it out? Oh, they knew it was for them because I told them. I said, this is your guy's song. <laughs> I got you, you were you the DJ basically the first day you walked in there till the last day? No, I can't remember who used to DJ right away, but I think the music was just terrible. So you get Willsy behind the, the DJ, things got weird, right? Was it Willsy or I, he was like was playing it, the uh, house music or whatever that shit is? So he's it, burping in the mic, folks. Was it who you thought Willsy was the first time or who you thought Willsy was actually? What? Didn't you think, uh, remember who was the uh, Booglas? Oh, <laughs> Booger? Didn't he sit in Will's uh, stall? Uh, yeah, I think right you're right. I think Booger, I thought Booger was uh, Willsey. Yeah, or Will, Willsey was Booger, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, you thought Booger was Willsey because he sat in Will's stall for the first like week and we're, a half. We, yeah, we were at least a week in, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's so quiet, he just didn't want to say anything. A lot of new well, guys to me meet when I got there. Here's the uh, the song for Lordo. It's actually called Fat Boy. I don't know if you can hear it. Oh, that's what you played. I know the song Fat Boy. <laughs> you played that I'm, for Lordo every time. I knocked a million. <laughs> <laughs> There's a oh. reason he hated me. Oh, but like he had to keep re-signing you, like because you were the best defenseman <laughs> in the league. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just stuck up to Todd, so Todd had to resign me. And then Florida's like, "You're signing them again?" <laughs> and he's like, oh. <sighs> "All right, I guess I got to sign with or play with the players I get." Yeah, but well, and you know what? When you're talking about your knees hurting and your back hurting and stuff like it, like I remember how nuts it would drive Lordo that like you couldn't do the running and the jumping and all the stuff <laughs> all off ice, and you'd be like, "I'm gonna jog back and forth." <laughs> Right. Do you remember, we used to go do our sprints there in the uh, in the BPT by the uh, vending machines. Yeah, because our knees were buggered up, and yeah, he he, yeah. yeah, it's tough when you can't do everything with the team, right? You feel bad, but like, what are you gonna do? You want to be able to play on the weekend, right? Yeah. And like, who needs to run stairs? Stairs <laughs> yeah. don't win you a champion. Never won me one. Nope. 
Yeah. Because clearly do. doing a two foot little sprint there that we did and then glide for the rest of it was definitely good enough. So yeah, yeah, we were we were pretty solid sprinters. Um yeah. Okay. Where are we here? we yeah. So okay. I talked asked about your dad. Folks, he played 230 games in the NHL. Research team saw that. Um, and you also, like speaking of your dad helping you and being honest, um, your brother also was um, a professional hockey player with very similar careers to like ours, same level of play. Um, he'll have to be a potter someday. I've, I've never met him, I don't think. No? No. Yeah, he's, uh, you should get him on. Yeah, and he played in Cardiff after me with you. So he, I was looking. He played with you like all a lot for brothers and like university pro, eh? Yeah. So it's actually like pretty funny. Like obviously, older brother always looked up to him. Uh, when I was younger, I ended up signing to go to the NCAA because I got drafted to the OHL, and it just I can't remember. It just didn't work out. You and, were going uh, to the NCAA. I uh, signed a letter in ten with Mercyhurst. Mercyhurst, you're too good for Mercyhurst. So I, uh, yeah, so I signed with them, and then uh, I got approached because my brother was in Barry. So they're like, uh, "Do you want to come play with your brother?" And they're going to trade for me, my rights with Guelph. So I'm like, "Yeah, play in my hometown. I get to play with my brother." I'm like, "Yeah, like I'll yeah. forgo school. I'll go to that." So I get uh, I get traded to Barry. I think I play like four games that year. I'm like 17. I go back to junior A and I start the next year and I got play like two months and then I got traded to Erie. But the funny thing is, is like I got traded with a guy named Andrew Shannon and instead of pulling the both of us in when we got traded, they pulled me and my brother in from practice to tell us. And then the other guy was still out there practicing for another 20 minutes, half an hour before they end up pulling him off and telling him he got traded. So your brother stayed there and you were so gone, my- but you left the scholarship to go to Barry and play with your brother. And then, how long were you there till you got traded? So the first year I got traded around December, I think. I played four games that year and then I went back to tier two. And then uh, the next year, I think I played 15. I was there for like two or three months and then traded. So I'm like, well, good thing I passed up that scholarship to go there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was curious about that because I saw you were drafted by Guelph but never played for them. So then you went to Erie. Yeah. And then... Um, there was a stint in there. You threw in 10 games in the U-Haul for fun, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just in Rockford at the end of the season one year. So that, like, you can do that. You can just leave the OHL and then come back the next year? Yeah, because I think it's, uh, like, an amateur tryout agreement or something. You just go and get some per diem. Like, yeah, the coast will bring some players in. And the U-Haul, back when it was the U-Haul, would bring some players in. And my brother, uh, it's funny because I just followed my brother around hockey. He actually did the same thing. He played for Rockford like a couple of years before that with the same coach, same everything, went and played at the end of the season. So it just worked out that he's like, oh, like your younger brother plays. Does he want to come play for us for 10 games in playoffs? So, yeah, sure. Well, okay. But, so then you go back. So you were young and pro then too, eh? Because you were yeah, I think even 18 done the or 19, yeah. 18 or 19. Yeah. So that would have been a bit of an eye opener or what, even if it's the U-Haul, like that still would have been some bigger boys than the O. Oh yeah. Bigger boys. Like obviously in the O you're living with a family, they're cooking your meals. I go there. I'm on my own. I got my brother's fake ID going out to the bar with these older guys. So luckily he's 21 and I can get into the bars and it's uh, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't go to the bars cause I was too young, but. But yeah, it's like right. finding your own groceries, trying right. to figure out how to cook food, right? And it, oh, yeah. uh, it's a learning big curve. Eye you. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. After that, you did though your last year. I, it seems like you kind of got traded for like a playoff run to the Saginaw Spirit, which one thing I should ask, sorry for burping in the mic again, um, <laughs> is you basically played most of your OHL career in the States, eh? I did. I never actually really thought about that till now, but. Yeah, I think I played three months out and then two and a half years or whatever it was, or two so years. you'd in the, be uh, crossing the border, like, all the time, eh? Oh, in Erie, our shortest trip was four hours. And our division was all in the all in Canada. So it was, like, you just used to having your passport, sleep on the bus. You wake up when the border, 
border guy comes in and looks at everyone's passport and you're half asleep, half awake. Like, yeah, it's interesting. It life is crazy. Uh, yeah. It was eerie was so much fun. American fans are a little bit different from uh, Canadian fans. Louder. Yeah. As much as rude as I'm going to be, they're louder, but they don't know the game as well. Or then some, so they just start cheering for, you know, anything really. They just want to when the, when the stick hits the glass hard when they're yeah like they yeah. tried to hit them but the stick hits the glass and they go nuts. Yeah. They just want to they just want to cheer and have some fun and drink some beers and so it was uh yeah it was so fun. They eh? like the fights. They like the fights. So were you fighting in the OHL then? Were you always a fighter and like an offensive defenseman? Yeah, I think I had. Uh, I can't remember what my most fights was like in the teens. Like in the somewhere teens. between like 10 and 15 fights a year. Is in, that right? Uh, That's quite a bit of fighting. Yeah. I just figured if I'm ever going to make it anywhere, obviously I can't skate. So I got to bring something. So if I can score a couple goals and fight, makes up for my lack of skating or something just to get me to the next level. And um, it, I it never actually, really worked out for me. You're like, you keep, yeah, you're skating like, I don't know. You were so deceptive. Like your skating didn't matter. <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah. It's like, just ugly. Well, you know, like when we were bag skating, yeah, it looked like you're struggling like I was, you know, we were, <laughs> we were, we didn't look great skating, but, um, for two I, different reasons. So, but yeah. yeah okay. Well, what? what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> bad knee, right? <laughs> I mean, right? Exactly. Bad knee. That's, uh, bad that's knee. what I was going with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bad anyway. Knee. Yeah. No, but you always got the job done, even if you weren't that fast. Like, look at four. Hey, your numbers were ridiculous today. I thought it was hilarious, but it's crazy that like just just skating is like why you're you don't obviously make it because you can do everything else. You won everywhere you went. You were the defenseman of the year everywhere, but you never really even got a shot. So after your U-Haul experience, then you go back to the O. What are your pro options out there? Nothing. I was in. Uh, That's nuts. Like I was in Saginaw. We lost first round. We everybody like I got traded there. I think we made like three big trades to get some guys, and then we ended up losing first round to the Sault Ste. Marie. And then it was kind of a, uh, well, like this guy like might think about like this team kind of watched you, but I had so like going to the U-Haul there at the end of the season, my 19 year old year, I'm like, Oh, maybe I can get someone in the coast for 10 games. And like called a couple teams, nothing dead silence. Nobody wanted me. It was just, so I'm like, all right. And then my brother called me. He's like, Hey, uh, yeah, I guess you're uh, you want to come to school. He's like, coach is going to call you. I'm like, okay. And the coach called me like, I don't know, a week later. He's like, all right, I got you signed up. I'm like, are you, are you going to tell me about the school or like anything? He's like, no, you've been recruited already. Who says the Just coach said that or your brother? The coach. <laughs> coach like, yeah, no, you're already coming. He's like, you want to go to school? Yeah. Okay. You're coming here. I'm like, all right, I, I guess I'm coming there. So you had a decent Why school not? package from the OHL and then uh, that, but is that one of the schools? Like I've heard some rumors of what may go on out East coast to like, people getting part-time jobs that maybe they work at, maybe they don't, but then their school's paid for. So one of those schools? Uh, no, there are a couple of schools. Like but that. You, you, oh, so it's a little different. Like in Ontario, if you go to school, I don't think any of your, the school can't pay for any of your tuition or something. I, can't I really don't know the rules. Cause I never really went that way. So I, I have no clue. So yeah, I'm pretty sure in in Ontario, they can't pay for your tuition other than an academic scholarship. So if you're good at school, where in the coast or in the East Coast, they can give you an athletic one. Money. Yeah. So I knew everybody least, went out East. That was like actually really good going to Canadian University. Yeah. So all the money you get from uh, like the OHL, like your school package doesn't have to go f- towards tuition. It goes towards your food and your housing and your books what else so like, and yeah yeah i'm drinking correct yeah because same as same as your scholarship money in the states yeah <laughs> okay yeah because it's it's halifax and there's like six universities within like 
50 kilometers. So all you do is drink till four in the morning. So is that where St. Mary's university is? Is Halifax? It's right in Halifax. It's like a stone throw away from Dalhousie. See, I don't know. So I've never really been out there, but um, this is a hazy sunset. Um, but uh, they have donairs out there, right? I just like talking about food every once in a while. Donairs are a big thing in Halifax, right? Did you dabble in that? Uh, big into the donairs. Donairs are, they're huge. They're on every street corner. Like, oh, that, Talk dirty you to me, Andrew. Talk dirty. <laughs> if you didn't get a donair after the bar, then oh. you weren't doing the East Coast properly. And is it donair sauce or can you get tzatziki? Because I'm a tzatziki guy. I don't really want, I don't, I don't know about the donair sauce. It's a little different well, for me. Then it's not a true donair. Is that right? If you're, if you're a true East Coaster, you'll get pizza and then you'll get donair sauce to go onto the pizza because okay. that's a big thing. I, so I they agree. drizzle the donair sauce on there and then it's just covered. Um, what's interesting is I actually have a donair pizza in the freezer right now that Colby and I want to try tonight, but um, yeah, no, gonna, I don't think it'll be as good as having it after the bar in Halifax though. Well, it might be when you're sober, who knows, but it tasted pretty good when you were drunk. <laughs> so you uh, basically went to that Canadian university then just like every other hockey guy going there after the OHL, but then you, uh, I guess really took over. Yeah, it was, uh, I'm like, what am I going to do? Might as well get an education. I always knew, like, I needed an education. Like, it's going to go to the NCAA, basically, for that. And then you're not really, like, university degree now is a high school diploma 20 years ago. Yeah. So, like, you're not getting a job without a university degree. So, I'm like, yeah, I got, might as well keep playing hockey. I'm young. I'm 20 years old. What else am I going to do with my life? I'm not going to get a real job and retire. Might as well just keep playing and go wherever I can. Yeah. So university it was and what'd you Halifax, take? A great city. Uh, same thing I took in the NBA. I took finance. Did you? Eh? And now you're a cop. Interesting. Yeah. Very very what educated cop, eh? Well I, I guess I could say my my double major I did a double major out there also in management. So now I manage Yep. Yeah, you do. People? You're babysitting. You are. You're managing yeah. you're managing people that can't get along in society, right? That can't manage themselves. Yes. Yeah, I've heard some of the stories from police officers that are my friends. Um when we have some later nights, they tell me some stories and there is some wild stuff that goes on in the police world. I wouldn't want to do that job. So good on you for doing it. Um yeah, maybe not on the podcast, but I'll I'll have a couple uh X-rated uh, funny stories for you. Yeah, yeah. You, and you guys all do for sure. Like it's wild, actually. Um, okay, so St. Mary's is in Halifax. Didn't know that. Learned something new today, folks. Um, There's your research team on that one. You can only search so much, buddy. I'm pretty busy. Um, I think Colby needs to pick it up here a little bit. <laughs> it's <is> busy <laughs> days around here, but um, yeah, Zoe had soccer tonight. You know, it's just a lot happening these days, but. Um, Okay. You guys won it though. Like the whole thing. I don't really know how Canadian university works. So like, is there like your own league and then you go to nationals, but like the, whoever wins the East coast league is probably going to dominate. Basically. Yeah. So it's, uh, I do know it. Perfect. You do. Yeah. So there's East coast, there's the West, which Alberta wins every year. And then there's Ontario and Quebec or. And one. Ontario Western basically is good. Right. Yeah. Western's good. McGill from Quebec is good. I don't even know who's good anymore now, but. Mm -hmm. But I think it's probably good. been the same for decades. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So it's, uh, but then there's only four teams, right? But they want six teams in the tournament. So then they have the host team, wherever that is. And then they have this rotating. Wild the, card. Yeah, wild card thing. So I think when we end up winning, I think we end up being the wild card team. So. So how, what is it? Just like a round robin and then. Yes. It's, it's just a round robin and a finals. So you play three games. So there's six teams. You play two different uh, divisions. And then whoever's so first your... out of those three teams moves on to the final. That's it. And then wow. The they're, 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 geez. They, they, <laughs> too, they don't want too many gates. Eh? They probably could have mixed in a couple more games, but hey. Eh? <laughs> well, I don't think there's too many fans up there in Thunder Bay where we were okay well um impressive stats by the way when you were there that was uh 
pretty wild. I don't think there's many people that do that, which um, you're also getting older each time. So Thunder Bay is where you want it. That's where you took, you took it down. That's where it was. It, uh, Good night out Thunder Bay after Ontario. that. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the bar we went to, but yeah, we had the big trophy and then we ended up going back to the, the hotel and sliding down the pool. So I've got a few photos of me holding the cup uh, above my head. It might've been dented by the end of the night. <laughs> like we just took turns going down the pool and sliding in and always smart to be sober and uh, fish and swimming and, you know, throwing a trophy at each other. Why not? Right. Well, things can get strange. I, yeah. Like uh, <laughs> I'd about throw in the trophy. Like, yeah, in junior, we didn't really um, handle the trophy with care and uh yeah, it was interesting what all went on, but that's what happens when you win, right? And I was just thinking, um, not to get off track, but being nice again, because we we're in a pod, but it's weird to me when I do these podcasts, it's like you literally won everywhere you played, except for, I guess the OHL, right? But you won everywhere yeah. you played and you really never got like that big of an opportunity. It's just interesting for me because a lot of guys never win and they move on up the ladder yeah yeah i guess it is what it is i got a little bit of an opportunity there in oklahoma but yeah well yeah you did but uh that we'll get into that because uh so you won at that time you had a good night um you won a bunch of awards and then you gotta be really old getting into pro but you went straight to the hl from canadian university not many guys do that eh yeah well i signed an hl deal but i think i played the entire year in the coast Okay, but played, you, uh, then you go like play like six games somewhere, Rochester, I think. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so it was kind of a just like the Rockford type thing. The just, uh, uh, AT, a PTO or whatever, right? Yeah, they called me up at the end of the year, and then it was tough because I was in school and I got exams coming up and papers, and so I'm like trying to talk to my teachers about telling them about this opportunity for me to go play pro hockey and. Can they, I like they weren't as understand? I guess the ones at Western Michigan would be <laughs> <laughs> not so much. Although they actually let me go. I think uh when I went back for my fourth year, I was basically graduated after my third. I think I had one more class because I took a bunch of classes in Erie. I actually ended up going to Mercyhurst and taking classes while I played in Erie, which was kind of funny, but <laughs> that is kind uh, of funny. So I had like half a year or almost a full year of classes of university before I ended up going to university. So I think I only had like four classes my, my last or two or three, my last semester. So I just, and they're kind of the, yeah, I don't know the, what. You, yeah. I know the layups. Yeah. You yeah. just take them because that was my last semester too. And like my teachers were great to me. And I told them like, I got to go to Syracuse and they're like, yeah, sure. But you just got to do this, this, and this. And I was like, yep got it see you later <laughs> and that was it yeah yeah so i can't remember if i did like work during while i was at rochester or if i just like did it when i got back but it was like i think in seven exam i did a paper or something like it's kind of a who cares yeah they always they didn't care they always figure it out for you but so you you get a bit of a chance with rochester but then you are you so you sign a one-way hl deal with wilkes bear penguins i did yeah so I was, uh, I think I was just talking to Wheeling and they're affiliated with the Wilkes-Barre and I'm like, ah, I don't really want to just sign with Wheeling because it's Wheeling, West Virginia. And who wants to go to Wheeling, West Virginia? It's quite the rink there too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So my agent, uh, agent, I don't know what he did. And they're like, oh, like, would you sign a, a one-way uh, American League deal? But you'll probably spend quite a bit of time down here. I'm like, sure. I'll make more money and spend my entire time in the coast. Yeah. Which was kind of stupid on my part, but whatever. That's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> I made, uh, I think I made three choices based on money in my, uh, my career. And all three were just horrible choices. Although I'll tell you, Wheeling, West Virginia was one of my favorite places ever to play. Is that it right? Was such, it was such a, a shit place. Like the town was great. The people were great. The town was just like, it's like, it's run down. It's very like blue collar. It's, but like, it was so much fun to play there. I think we had shares old like tour buses or uh, 
as our bus that we had that would break down like every trip because it was just so old and like crappy. It was but, minor leagues. I, I played against them and like, yeah, it, you would feel like it was kind of like slap shot, right? It was. And then like we had two houses. So the owners owned houses that would house all the players. These houses haven't been taken care of in like 50 years. So the house two doors down from us. So there was our house, a random person living in the middle and then another house and the other house, uh, they ended up losing their electricity like halfway through the year because a raccoon was in the wall and ate through the cords. So it ate through the wires and like put their electricity out. So they kept coming over to our place to cook. And like, I don't think it got fixed for like a month and a half. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, when in, in Dayton, um, our ceiling fell through. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, uh, it didn't get fixed for a while too. So I understand the frustrations. <laughs> it's quite the time. <laughs> but it was like, you just make the best of it, right? Like it was so much fun. Like, and that is what's fun, right? When you have the right group of guys that make it a good time and like, nobody's whining about it. As soon as you get a couple negative guys complaining, it really can make things sour. Yeah. And like, yeah, we had a couple of guys on our team that, you know, obviously weren't the best, but you just do what you do with the guys you don't like. You exclude them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they live somewhere else. So, <laughs> and you have fun with the guys that want to have fun. I totally you also understand. Another podcaster you had actually lived with me and wheeling in that house. Uh, hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Wheeling podcaster that lived in that house. No, I don't got it. I don't think you played with him. But he did play in Cardiff. Deeds. Sorry. It was. I actually Debbie saw him on it. the roster, but he only had like two games played, so I wasn't going to bring it up. Yeah. So we actually played in the – we had like – it was like the houses were split, so there was like two apart or two rooms or something on the bottom floor and three on the top. And I was on the top with a guy named Chris Barton. And then we had a spare room. And it was like this old, like small, small room. And they're like, yeah, we got a guy coming in. I'm like, all right. They're like, Devin did new mente. I'm like, I played against this guy like sweet and then he ended up making good friends with our neighbor and I think he was only there for a month or so and then I don't know where he ended up going after that but he seems like a great dude um oh he was so much fun to live with even for the short time like yeah like yeah think just funny for the short who, time I met him in the pod I was like ah this guy seems like a dude I'd want to be teammates with yeah I like, think how many guys you played with that you don't really remember you played with them it was kind of just a brief yeah I'll always yeah. remember I play with that guy. Yeah. Well, I, I heard about how he plays and everything. I actually never played against him either, which is strange for our careers to never have crossed on the ice. Yeah. Um, so with the wheeling nailers though, you did a couple things I didn't do that year. Uh, you were an all rookie team member in the East Coast and an ECHL all-star at one point. That was that year too, right? So an all rookie and ECHL all star. And usually nowadays, if you're doing that good in your rookie year, you start getting chances, right? Yeah. Well, that was the uh, kind of the dumb thing I did is I signed one way deal with the American League team and they were stacked. They had a bunch of players up there at Black Aces already during the year. So, like, there was no chance I was getting up there and playing. I think. I think I got two or seven games in at the end of the year just because wheeling was done. But yeah, just for fun, they let you come play yeah. two games. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, come on up here and see what happens. And then they uh, they moved up to the next round. And then they're like, yeah, we have too many guys now because Penguins were coming down. So, like, yeah, you need to get, you need to go home. That's, like, that's what happened yeah. when I left school and I got to Syracuse. I was there for six games and then all Columbus got put out and all those guys came down. They're like, Time to head back to school, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, well, yeah, that's that. Yeah, like I understand wanting the one-way A deal. You don't have to pay for an apartment um, in the coast, and then you make AHL money. Um, so you almost feel like you're playing in the show, making that big bucks in the coast, eh? <laughs> I know, like wheeling, like guys weren't making much, and like one of the top guys, I think, it was like five or six hundred dollars a week, like. Yeah, and you can buy them a couple beers at the bar, and you feel pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> and Wheeling was a pretty cheap place to live, and I was only on league minimum with the HL, but yeah, it was your okay, money so, went a long way there. But so then, after you make that decision, and you do, you have a great season in the coast. I don't know who you start the season with next year. Is it Cincinnati or is it Wheeling? 
Cincinnati. So you, the, uh, you did start for 13 games there, and then you go yeah. to Wheeling. Okay, so what happens in Cincinnati? So it was, uh, like I said, one of those decisions I made more money. It was like $100 more a week. and uh, Big bucks. Big bucks, folks. And I'm like, all right, I'll sign there. I'm like, you know, I don't know. It was, I ended up going there, and obviously I love the guys. Like Cincinnati was a great city to live in, so much fun. No fans, uh, none. Uh, there were some pretty good fans there. Is that right? Like, when I first was playing, when I was playing in Dayton, I guess this was years earlier, and then I guess they got good at hockey, but um, they had no fans in Cincinnati, but I, I think they won the Kelly Cup a couple times after, so they might have got fans yeah. after. But the uh, the rink was, like, it was a huge rink, right? Like, it's it's next to football stadium. And like, the baseball, too. Don't and the you baseball see the stadium. Yeah. yeah, like, it's right next door. So then, like... They have this hockey rink, so they make it like a nice arena that it's from the East Coast, and they're like, yeah. whatever. But, yeah, I had a great time there. I actually uh, played for uh, the Devils' new coach, Jared Scaldi. Oh, yeah? So you played for him? And, yeah. Oh, so, boy. Uh, First one on the pod to play for him. Yeah, so I had a nice uh, nice conversation with some uh, with Neil Francis this summer about him. Great things to say about him. Awesome guy. Um but didn't, yeah, he tra- since- didn't he trade your ass? <laughs> <laughs> well, I requested a trade. Oh, okay. <laughs> so things just weren't working out. They had a bunch of guys on AHL deals, obviously, because they give me more money because they had all these guys on AHL deals. They kind of lost against the salary cap down there. Yep. And I'm like, listen, like, it's just, it's not working out for me. It's just not, we're just not meshing. Like the way I was playing, it just, yeah. he's like, yeah. And he agreed. And he's like, where do you want to go? I'll trade you anywhere you want to go. So he's like, let me make some calls. And so I, I think the next day or a couple of days later, I went back in. He's like, yeah, like, uh, I can't remember if it was South Carolina and, or somewhere else, but it was two teams. He's like, or there's Wheeling, but you got to take less money if you go back to Wheeling. And I'm like, you know what? I made this decision coming here based on money. I'm like, I'll take less money. I'll go to a place where I know the coach and I know I had some success. And, so then he traded me back to Wheeling. And you turned down going to South Carolina. <clears throat> for Wheeling, West Virginia. For less money. For less money. First time on the pod, folks. Cheers. This guy, really, that's a that's a decision right there. Cheers, man. Cheers. South Carolina is a pr- pretty nice place. It was, but it ended up being the best decision. It was I know. I saw what happened. Success, right? I saw what happened. So. I know you made the right decision. But, I saw what happened. I'm just saying. But some nice you. weather or go to Wheeling, West Virginia. Yeah. But the, but how do you not get go play for the Wheeling Nailers? Like, is there a better name in hockey than the Wheeling Nailers? I, yeah. And it's a, it actually, like, I like the old rink there. Like, it's old school. Um, I never really saw the town because you always come in on the sleeper bus and you just get off and play. So I actually have no idea what it looks like. Well, you're lucky because the hotel there had some bed, bed bug issues. I remember a team would come in and they get bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was the only hotel in town. So, like, they had no choice. And... <laughs> I actually have ants in my shed right now. It's actually quite upsetting, too. So, there's that. Um, get some traps well, out there. Come on. Well, I, yeah, they're, they're new here. It's not good. I'm not happy about it. Or just it. stop spilling that delicious beer you got there. I, I don't mean to. Um, okay. brewery. It's the best there is. It actually is. No, I don't spill any, actually. But um, Wheeling, when you did get traded there, I got it written down here, 18 points and 17 games played in the coast. When I played there, there was no defenseman getting a point a game. So way to go. Um, then you get called up. So you weren't there long that time. No, I think I got – every time I've been traded, it's been traded in like December every year. Like end of November, early December. I never got traded once. Well, I guess you're just a better player. No, I no. You just I, played well. And um, have, I read off your intro there. I had to take three different hard breaths to get through it. So no, I don't think I was better. <laughs> or people like your work that work ethic a little bit better than mine. So you didn't lose favor. <laughs> I, favorite in I think place. I think we both frustrated people. <laughs> 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 That's where we're doing sprints by ourselves over yeah. by the vending machine. These these hurt. These hurt. We gotta we gotta we gotta do the sprints over here. <laughs> no stairs. No, no, no stairs. Softer on your knees anyway. But 
Like, I think we should have been on the bike, you know, but what yeah. are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> yeah, I got sidetracked there. So you actually go up to OKC though. And uh, so that's, you got your two cup of coffee games with Wilkes-Barre, but this is like your first go up there. And like, not many guys get called up from the coast and stay there like ever really the guys that usually go up are there for a game or two and then guys in their own organization get healthy and then they're gone. Right. But you actually stayed yeah. there the rest of the year. Yeah. So it actually, uh, so, you know, when they call you, they're like, Hey, like pack for one week or two weeks or whatever it is. So I got my place in wheeling. I got my car in wheeling and like, yeah, pack for two weeks and then uh, you should be good. So I'm like, all right. So I pack for two weeks. I go up there. They already have another guy from the, the coast, uh, Kane La Franchise, which is probably the best name in hockey. That was and his then, real uh, name? That was a guy's name? Last, Kane La Franchise. Jesus. And then uh, I can't remember if another... Was, was he good? Nathan. Yeah, he was good. Like, then, uh, But he wasn't the franchise. He wasn't the franchise. He was for the last case, so he was the franchise. Captain Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, another guy, uh, Nathan Deck. And we were all from the coast. We lived in a hotel. I ended up living in a hotel for six months. But uh, so we go there and there's three defensemen from the coast. So I'm like, okay, like I'll be here for a little bit. They'll send me home. And then guys came back healthy and they ended up sending uh, La Franchise home. Uh, and they ended up calling back up again, but they sent him home when I'm thinking I'm just getting sent home. And then they're just like, yeah. And then I just... I'm like, okay. We went on road trips. They're like, okay, because they were cheap. It's like, hey, you got to book out of your hotel room. So pack up all your shit, put it in a bag, and then the hotel would keep a suitcase for us. So I'm thinking, all right, after this road so trip. They wouldn't, they wouldn't pay for the hotel room while you went on a road trip, and then you'd have to come back and check back in and move back into a room. Probably yeah. not even the same room. No, definitely not the same room. So like, but we Isn't had, it like, fun kid- living like that? So the worst part is, so if you're like up like that, right, they have to give you per diem because you're living in a hotel, but they booked us into a kitchenette room. So we always have a kitchenette because that's the hotel that was there. That's and nice. then you couldn't buy groceries because you have to check out every four days, five days. Yeah. What do you do with your groceries? Yeah. Tough balance. So you don't buy groceries. So I think the hotel put out meals like twice a week, like Tuesdays and Thursdays, they'd have like dinner. So we'd go down for dinner. And other than that, we just eat out. Yeah. Because what else are you going to do? But there, there ended up being like six or seven of us in the hotel. Like, and you have months. nothing else to do but go out to eat, right? Like once practice is over for the day and like you're new and pro, you're like, well, what else do we do except figure out what we're going to do for lunch and dinner and in between? Yeah. <laughs> other than nap. Like, like nothing. And like, we had uh, like we had the young guys. Then we had like Randy Jones, like played for Philly for years, played in the Ran- NHL. Rand- Randy Jones, like the left hand shot defenseman. No, different. I'm thinking of a different uh, guy. But yeah, so he ended up uh, living in a hotel, and he loved Toby Keith's uh, restaurant. So like he was there. So we'd all go out with him. Uh, like Theo Peckham came down for a conditioning stint for a couple weeks, and. Like, he's, he's a local boy he, he's around here i played senior a against him yeah me too played in hamilton for senior a <laughs> but uh yeah he was a nice guy coming down for yeah he was hang, a nice guy for those two weeks yeah hang out in the hotel and everything um, oh yeah so one thing i had down about the hockey part of things is uh like you probably didn't play much coming up from the coast at the start but obviously they start liking you because that team makes the playoffs and I've talked to other people on here. Like when you play AHL playoff games, like those are a bigger deal than uh, like the regular season games. Like you actually played a bunch that year and got points. Like you, you had worked your way up within the 20 something games you played there that like come playoff time, you were a player. Yeah. Uh, like actually, a real one. Uh, I know it's weird, isn't it? It's funny. Cause like, like you remember uh, Colton Tubert, it's like big uh, world junior guy, like huge uh, on the radar. So were you with an Edmonton team? Is that who they're with? Yeah, that's who they were with. 
So like he was huge. And then, and then like playoffs, I was just, I played a little bit, I think one game or two games, like I was on their first power play for a bit. And then they realized I was way out of my league and took me off it. And why, that being why just like a defensive, yeah. I was like a defensive specialist during the regular season. Cause I'm like, whatever, I'm not here to get points. I'm just here to eat some minutes and like let these. And you played that play. role then you were just chipping it out or were yeah. you, you weren't making yeah, tape it. to tape passes and like toe drag guys last man back or anything. No, not, none of it. That, get that puck out. Oh, that's disgusting. Well, some tape to tape, but no, like no toe yeah. dragging, no, like, yeah. no, like fun stuff. I know. But, uh, and then we came into playoffs and like Colton Tubert, who's like a first round draft pick, the NHL, like had a couple bad games. So they ended up putting me in there. So then like, I'm like, Oh shit. Like, here we go. And then I'm ended up playing like, I feel like I played like tough four minutes. Like I played a ton in the playoffs. Seven terrible points for, in 14 games. Yeah. Terrible for Leafs fans because my goal in playoffs was against Peter Morazic, where I scored on him. So that's not boding well for any Leaf fan because nobody was in front of the net. That guy just let the puck in from the top of the circles. <laughs> I think he wasn't ready for the off speed pitch, but mm, it, yeah. uh, and then, yeah. And then we end up losing and. uh, I think I ended up being on the ice for two goals against in game seven of the conference finals. So Just that you were on the ice, dude, that like guys that get called up from the coast that like aren't on AHL deals. And then you're taking the spot of a first rounder, dude, that shit didn't happen where I saw, um, like yeah. those, those guys kept playing, um, and they were going to keep playing, <laughs> you know, like yeah. that you took that job man. that's incredible. So, that's what I'm curious about then is uh, if you did that and you proved yourself in the AHL and like you finally had kind of established yourself. If you're playing the conference finals in the AHL, like you're there now and you decided to leave then, right? So in the exit meeting, I kind of talked about, hey, like I'd love to come back. Like I had a lot of fun. Like what are the kind of chances? And uh I think their their answer was, yeah, you know, we got, uh, you know how it is. They got new draft picks coming up. They're like, we can't offer you contract now. Maybe later. We're not quite sure. Who knows? So you I'm think like, it's because you, know you were on two goals against in that game seven? Probably. It was fresh in their mouth, right? And it was fresh right there, right? It just happened. Yeah, because we ended up, uh, I think we were up by a goal going into the third period. And then they scored the two goals in the third period I was on the ice for. And then you, yeah, you go for your exit meeting and they're like, yeah, we got new guys coming. We're, and like people get pissed off right away. But like when you look at your, the way you worked your way up there, like there's not many guys that do that. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Like I could see how it happens. They're pissed off. Yeah. But probably wasn't even like, it wasn't like your fault or your turnover, probably, but you're on the ice, right? Uh, one was kind of my fault. Oh, dear. Uh, I made a, uh, uh, I want to say a, a horrible pinch, but not a great one. And uh, they end up scoring. But I will say the goal they scored was from like between the hash mark and the dot, but like outside, like closer to the boards. And it was just like a horrible angle. Like, I don't know what the goal he was doing. And then the other goal was just like a fluke point shot, which what are you going to do? Yeah. So but like, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's quite impressive that you worked your way up to that role that year and they realize how effective you are. But then, you know, though that coach in the AHL, he isn't the one making the decisions of who gets contracts next year, right? It's the yeah. scouts, it's the guys, or it's the GM, but the scouts are telling him what they think. And they weren't the ones that scouted you. <laughs> so, and then yeah. you're, the, that coach obviously lo- liked you and uh, probably would have taken you wherever he went, right? If he was allowed to. Yeah. The, uh, I can't remember the one coach, but yeah, Rocky Thompson. Last I saw, he was head coach in uh, Windsor. Uh, Todd Nelson was the other guy. He ended up being head coach in Detroit and then Edmonton for a bit. And I don't know where he is now. But uh, yeah, you know, it's just. Uh, so, so, okay. So the exit meeting happens. And you make the decision that you're going to Germany, right? So um, we'll get into that. But, like, how do you make that decision that you're going to Germany? And who called you from Germany? So uh, You know where I'm going with that. Oh, yeah. 
we got a lot to talk about with this guy. Okay. But uh, okay. So exit meeting. Excited. I'm really excited. Yeah. So exit meeting, they're kind of, you know, whatever. They kind of just kind of push it off. And I'm like, I'm not waiting. My brother's in Europe. I'm like, I'm just going to go to Europe, whatever. So I get an agent, a European agent who brings me two offers. He's like, you can go to Alsvenskin in Sweden for 10 grand less, or you can go to Germany in the DL for 10 grand more, but the team is garbage. And I'm like, firstly, Germany DL. I'm like, like, even if the money was different, I'm like, I would definitely pick the DL and go there. Cause yeah. it's a DL. Yeah. It's a, so I never talked to anybody before I got to Germany. And that, that, that happens, right? Like that happens. And I'd want to do the same thing. And I probably, I wouldn't have been asking around. I would sign that ticket. Yeah, absolutely. And then that was the third horrible decision I made for money in my career. I understand. Um, okay. Well, I guess I'll ask <laughs> who was your coach that season? The man, the myth, the legend, Christian Brittick. Muff. Christian? Muff. Yeah, yeah. They like to call yeah. him Muff. Yeah, I believe. So he got fired from beating Heim um, after he was asking us to take slap shots from the red line because they were always a threat. <laughs> um, and um, we weren't allowed to pass it to each other. We had to just shoot it in and then trap. Um, don't know how that system didn't work by the end. Um but, um, yeah, after he was let go by beating him, which we won a championship with him. So, you know what? He played me a ton. I don't have anything bad to say. I actually re-signed to play with him after a year, knowing exactly what I was getting into. So, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> yeah. Not a smart move there. Although, no. I guess if you win. because no, well, then my knee then. went the next year, right? And it may have had something to do with the training that um, went on over there. Yeah, well, Tony, if it's muscle related, it's fine. But anything else, no, you need to suck it up. Yeah, yeah, no. He, did um, did I, you get I, that too? Well, he at one point taped a guy up like he was a UPS package because <laughs> he had, uh, yeah, no, no, there was, uh, so I guess myself personally, my knee, uh, my, my PCL was partially torn. We had three doctors with three different decisions. And, um, obviously they told me to go with the doctor that said four to six weeks and we never did get another MRI to see how it was looking when it was four weeks in, um, my fault. I didn't have any agents or anyone telling me advice. Um, then pregame skate, um, we're stretching as a team. He comes out the first game of regular season. This is four weeks later. And he says, and we're going to have Wally back unless he's a pussy. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, you call me out, I'll play, I'll play. And I lasted four games and completely tore my PCL and changed my life and career. So cheers, Christian. Yeah, thanks, Muff. Yeah, great guy. It's funny because, yeah, yeah. Because obviously, I, so my knee problem is, I was, I never have a knee problem like you. I just, it's a condition, it's called bipartite patella. Basically, my kneecaps never fused together when I was a child because they come separated. And they're supposed to fuse together. So mine never fused together. So they're like just a little bit separate. So they would rub. Your kneecap? Anyway, my kneecap, yeah. It's like a weird, weird thing. It's like 1% of the population has it, but Is it both you would never knees know. Or one knee? Um, I've never really got extra. I've only got x-rays on one knee. The one is more like it hurts more. The other one's kind of like it's sore. So I'm assuming it's both, but. The one is the only one that's really caused me problems. So he would have had none of that. No. So like, and at this point, like I've got uh, separated my shoulder a bunch. I've dislocated my shoulder. He wants you to like, and he had these insane workouts that made absolutely no sense. So we would do sprints. The first month we were there, we didn't touch the ice. We played ball hockey on like just the ground. And we do a bunch of these workouts and sprints. And I'm like, listen, like when I got there, I'm like, Hey, like I've got knee problems. I got shoulder problems. I can't do like heavy squats because he wants you to do one rep or two rep squats. Heaviest one rep. as possible. Like try and see if you can get your asshole to fall out on the floor. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 And I'm yeah, like, Hey, I, like, yeah. listen, I, I try to do these. Like it, 
I just, I can't do these. And then he'd have these like, you'd just grab, you'd grab onto a bar and you'd hang it like a monkey and you'd like swing like one arm up and then you'd switch arms. And I'm like, hey, like I got shoulder problems. So I can't do this either. And he like, he got so upset with me that like my knees hurt and I couldn't do these heavy squats. I'd still do squats and I'd just do like six reps instead of one rep, like max squats. But no. He, he couldn't handle that, man. He could not he, handle that. No, it was his way or it was the highway. Like it was. Do you know what he said to me? The, all that, this was actually, it made me laugh, but he made us weigh in all the time. So then oh, yeah. I'm going into the shower and I, I weigh in. And I look at the number and it's like 83 kilos, right? So then I get in the shower and he co- comes to the scale. I'm standing there. He goes, hey, you got to weigh in. I'm like, yeah, it was 83 kilos, 83 point whatever. And he goes, trust is good. Control is better. Get on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> so I got on and sure enough, I was 83.2, but he did not take his uh, – his first line winger's word for it. I had to get on the scale and he was letting me know he was in charge. Oh yeah. He's definitely in charge. But the funny thing is like, you could literally break your ankle and he'd be like, no, or you'd have a torn a You're not PCL hurt. or whatever you have. You're not hurt. No. But if you said, Oh, my quad muscle is a little sore. He'd be like, Oh, muscle. Okay. Go take a break. Anything to do with muscle. Oh, that's man. it. You're good. So like, instead of, I wouldn't tell my knees hurt anymore. I'd just say, Hey, my quad, like I've got a bruise on my quad. He's like, okay, go take a break. Don't do any squats. And I'm like, how does this make sense? Like a legit injury compared to just some bruised muscle. Do you know the doctor like, that said four to six weeks was from his hometown? That was his friend. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. For sure. He told him to say that. Like cra- okay. cra- when I look back on it and how young and dumb I was, I was like 23, 24. And like, changed my whole life like craziness that i that that, what a punk he's the biggest snake i've ever met in hockey he's one of the worst like man i uh he's a horrible person i i i wish i i like i wish he wasn't um but you're right so cheers yeah just a horrible person i'm not i'm not sure what else to say um (laughs) what like he did play me a ton and like I I had I had a good year. We won a championship, but the way they dealt with my knee, the way he dealt with injuries with other guys, the way he treated my friends, like some of the shit that went on. I was like, yeah, no, I can't argue with what's being said. Yeah. I'll give you an example on how bad a person he was. So our team is garbage. I think we won like 10 games all year. Like we are horrible. So we go into Berlin, which is, I think they were top of the table at that point. And like playing in Berlin, our team is garbage. Our goalie, Bobby Geffer, was, he was really good. He was the only reason we'd stay in games. So we end up winning 2-1 in Berlin. Bobby Geffer set the DL record for 76 saves because we won 2-1 in a shootout. And we're like, this is like amazing. Like this guy is like, he just wanted the game. He's the best school he ever. And then we uh, read the newspaper the next day, and all it is is Christian Britic going in there talking about how great he was and how his system was the one that won us the game. And that there was no Berlin. mention. And there was no mention whatsoever of our goalie who just set the record for saves in a single game. Like, it was – and that's the snake that that guy is. Well, yeah, and there's people like that in hockey that like it's got to be about them, right? And if it's if it's about other people that deserve the credit and they're not getting it, they just can't handle it. And uh, yeah, yeah, um, I don't really want to talk about him anymore. Do you want to talk about more fun stuff? Yeah. Okay. So those are your three times going for money. So I remember the time I was making the decision to sign with Cardiff. Um, I was actually living in the house in Elmira. It was the first phone call from Lordo. I remember being in Elmira talking to him about it and him like getting it. He was like our age and he got it. Yeah. Like he, you know, talking to a coach that gets it. I was like, wow, this, this sounds refreshing. And then uh, that same time we bought the house here in Kincard and then like signed up for the NBA and like made this whole plan of like what we were doing with our lives. And uh like we get to Cardiff and then you get to the big blue tent and uh, it's quite the, 
<laughs> so, so how did you get to Cardiff? What's your story? I can't remember. I think Lord will end up messaging me on Facebook or something. Like it was just like random. Like I had an agent and he was kind of looking for me, but it was, you know, I got fired from Germany. Didn't play though. Like from in the new year on, like, I think my last game was middle of December. So then what happens the rest of the year? Like what, why don't you go, if you, were you fired or what did you not want to go somewhere or, or were you stuck there? So I'll give you the short version of it. So I had butted the guy. I got suspended for six games. So in the six games, all the boys went out to drink on a Friday night after a game. And we had practice the next morning on Saturday, at like 10 o'clock. So I went out with them completely shit faced hammered go I Saturday morning I'm obviously still drunk but I go there I practice and I'm not playing and I'm not going on a road trip on Sunday so that excuse me for like 45 minutes and one of the most the biggest snakes I've ever played with to Ashton Rome ends up going to our coach and saying oh yeah like can't you smell the booze on this guy he's hammered so then seriously yeah so Christian Bredick uh when you're suspended, so when you're suspended, and you're not yeah. playing anyways, and you're not going on the road trip, the guy goes out of his way to go tell the coach that. Yeah, on the ice. So, Britic's like, "That's it, okay, practice over." And he's like, "I want to see you in my office." So I have no idea that this happened at this point, right? He just ends practice. I'm like, "Sweet, I don't have to beg see anymore. I can go and like sleep." So he calls me in the office, like, "You were drinking last night?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I had a few drinks." He's like, "That's it," and he walks out. And then, like, two days later, they try to fire me. I'm like, no. So then uh, it was, like, starting to get increase, increase. And on New Year's Eve, I was like, I just had an inkling. They brought in a defenseman, like, a week before. I'm like, they're going to actually fire me now. And uh, so New Year's Eve, I went out till 12.01. I had one drink, and I went home because I knew the next day he's going to call me in that office, and he's going to try to fire me. So I'm not giving him any ammo. So anyway, I go home and I go to practice the next morning. All my stuff's packed up. So he calls me and he's like, yeah, you're out of here. I'm like, okay, pay me my money. He's like, no. So then it was like a negotiation. They're like, you can leave. We'll give you some money to go play somewhere. So I ended up getting a deal on the coast like a month later because I was trying to find something in Europe. Couldn't find anything. Find something in Europe like a month later right at the deadline. And they're like, okay, we're not paying you any money then. I'm like, well, I'm not making enough in the coast to offset my salary here. I'm like, pay me the difference. And I'm and gone. And I'm gone. They're like, no. I'm like, fine. I'm so staying. I stayed there. Yeah. So I didn't practice. I wasn't allowed to go to the to the dressing room because Muff would said he would call the police on me if I showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so I practiced. Had a boy, Muff. <laughs> so like, I was allowed to practice with the junior team there. So I practiced with the junior team. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I practiced with them, and I just I drank my complete face off, and like had a great time. So. I didn't play from then on in. And then they were going to fire Muff. And then they told me he was going to be fired, but not till the end of the year. And then the assistant coach told me that if he gets fired, he takes over. He's going to bring me back because I got along <laughs> great with him and his brother. You went from being fired now to being asked back? If, yeah, if <laughs> Muff left. So the assistant coach and the captain. This is a long coach. episode, folks. Woolen chop, <laughs> brown ale. So the assistant coach and the brother were brothers or the captain were brothers and I got along with them both great. So he's like, listen, like Muff got told he's done at the end of the season, but if they fire him, they're trying to fire him early, but they're not sure. If they fire him early, we'll bring you back and you play on the team. If they don't fire him, then there's nothing okay, to do. Okay, for that season. Okay, yeah. So they ended up not firing him. So I just stayed there and then I went on a ski trip with the boys and then I went home. So I didn't play, so... Anyway, yeah, Lord will mess me on Facebook. This story went way out of control. So Lord will mess me on Facebook. He said, hey, do you want to play? And I'm like, I'm looking for something else. I'm like, yeah, I have nothing else to go to unless I want to go back to the coast because no one in Europe wants me because I got fired. So I'll sign on. I'll go for an MBA. And, and then, yeah, showed up at the big blue tent there in the bus. And I'm, So at that point, did you think you were wanting to be – a police officer or why did you sign up for the MBA? Why was that intriguing to you? So always in the back of my mind, I always want to be a police officer. Always thought about it, but who knows what happens, right? I want to set myself up for the best I 
best situation I can be in. So if I got to go to the UK and play hockey there, why not get an MBA, right? Like schooling is obviously pretty important. I've always liked going to, I've never, sorry, like going to school, but I've always known the importance of schooling and education. So I'm like, I might as well go get an MBA if I'm going to Cardiff anyway. So I ended up talking to Cardiff and Brayhead and, and end up picking Cardiff, but uh, I'm like, yeah, if I'm going to go to Cardiff, they're offering an MBA, I'll take it. Like, I'm not going to make a decision based on money and go to the Cardiff for maybe like $50 more a week, but not get schooling. I might as well just get schooling and better my life when I'm going to retire. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And like everybody that can get the MBA, like even if you end up being a police officer, I'm sure it, it showed like responsibility and maturity that you were willing to do that while you played hockey and helped you get the job you did, even if it wasn't that related. Right. Yeah. And even like, like you obviously know, like the skills it taught you, like the MBA. You don't realize NBA, what it's teaching you until you're done. Right. Yeah. Like the MBA at Cardiff met, it's not teaching you much. Like, let's be serious. Like, the schooling is no bigger than your undergrad that you did in university. But the people but like, you meet and the different challenges you go through and like playing hockey while doing it, man. Yeah. I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't have wanted to be at an Ivy League school trying to do an MBA and be a hockey player. There's no way you could do it. No, it's uh, be nearly impossible. You'd be so tired from doing all the work and trying to stay up and then going on road trips and then trying to come back and do work. Well, like, like we, we, we still had busy times. And like, I remember you, like you would give me anxiety. Cause I had like the kids and the wife and like, I was like, I was doing school and like, that's what I was doing. And I'd have everything done way before. And you'd be like, ah, yeah, I'll get that done before it's due. <laughs> and you were like, like, you were younger than me. And I was like, geez, man, I, I can't handle this. Like I, I'd have it done like a week early and you'd be handing her in like the last day. Well, I was just smart on my half because I'm like, hey, Wally, can you send me the paper you wrote? <laughs> You're like, well, you can't copy it. I'm like, I'll change all the words. I'm just going to keep the style similar. <laughs> and then I basically just read yeah. your paragraph and then I turn it over and I write my own paragraph saying the exact same thing. In a different way. But, <laughs> but it wouldn't be plagiarized because I it's read a talent. yours. It's a talent. <laughs> and then I read your next paragraph or your body and then I turn it over and then I type my own saying the same thing but in my own way what do you and, what do you think i do as a supervisor now like i have really great people that work for me and i'm like hey can you send me this and can you send me that and then i'm gonna make it my own but like try and you know prop it up a little bit and then like and then boom you got a great product <laughs> yeah is that what supervisors do they just take credit for all the work done below them i think that's the management side of things right like that's uh that's what i always took in school so yeah no i get it <laughs> yeah that's just what you're supposed to do geez we got sidetracked where were we we're in cardiff oh now we're back in school again we're talking about school again how do we get there i want okay here's a question i got written down um because i know you did it i think it was mainly after i was done there when they started doing these nights but um shout out to zach sullivan i think he was episode like 13 um but you were like a pride ambassador um for those like everyone can play and i i i feel the same way i think nobody gives a shit what you're into away from the rink you show up to play hockey and you're part of a team you're one of the brothers just like me it doesn't matter what the hell you want to do away from here that's your life um, so I was really proud of you. I don't really know how you got into that, but, um, yeah, I feel the same way. So how'd you, how'd you decide to do that? And how, like, what is that all? What's all that? Yeah. So it's funny. I don't know why I ever got into it, but yeah, it's the same thing. It's like, who, who gives a shit who you are? Just come and play hockey and sorry, Marv. Oh. So, uh, running around, yeah, he's trying to scratch to get outside, but, uh, it's like, who is the shit who you are? Just come play. And if you're going to have to play on the team, you play on the team. Like, I don't care. And uh, so Todd ended up doing that. You can play video. I think, uh, was it a third year I was there? You're tapping a and finger. I, Stop it. Back off. <laughs> sounds like Hendo's podcast. You're yelling at me. Is that yelling at Hendo? Yeah, because he kept tapping you. 
Oh, well, I time. do that with people. I like, yeah, no, I yeah. could, I could hear it. Oh, that was a Pepsi <laughs> bottle, though. Hey, eh? you're still yeah, drinking yeah. that, eh? No, still haven't had any Coke lately. Uh, Coke's forbidden in this house. Yeah, yeah. Just you always, you always love Pepsi, Pepsi, eh? It's delicious. Okay, sorry. Go but, on. Uh, yeah. So Todd uh, had the video, and then another. Uh, I'm just gonna say. It. Another guy you had on the podcast a few episodes ago, Simsy from Sheffield, that complete idiot, made a oh, horrible dear. decision to call two gay guys out that were kissing on the Jumbotron, saying it's gross. Like, I don't know. He, I know he thinks he's a God's gift to UK hockey. That guy's a complete moron. But anyway, he does that. So I'm like, this is like, why is this happening? Like, it's 20, whatever it was. Like, are we not over people being gay like who cares let them let people decide who they want to be who are you to d- dictate how somebody lives their life so i end up going up to todd i say hey todd like you know with all this stuff going on like I think like we could have like a pride night or like you know is that something like we could arrange He's so that like, was that was your idea after that well let's say we talked about it but todd did all the work Right. No, I'm pretty sure that um, that happened when I was done in Cardiff. That would have been the year after you guys started doing that. Um, But yeah, like, I don't know exactly what Simsy said or anything like that. But yeah, that that sucks. Yeah. So. uh, So, yeah. So I just said, Todd, like this, you know, there's something we can do. And he's like, yeah, it's like we can do that. And then I didn't talk to him for like a month about it after I'm like, Oh, like, I wonder what happened with that. And all of a sudden he's like, yeah, so uh, we got a pride night uh, and it's going to be this date. And uh, I'm assuming that he's like, do you mind being the ambassador with it? I'm like, absolutely. Cause obviously this is something that needs to change in UK hockey. If this is still a problem, which it shouldn't be, but. Well, and hockey everywhere. Yeah. But executives of teams making stupid choices and stupid words. So if this needs to be done, then let's do it. And uh, so that's actually that's actually the proudest thing. I'm the most, or whatever I'm trying to say. Most rewarding. That's, that's the thing I'm proudest the most of from being in Cardiff. That that game is still going on, and that I had even a small fraction of a part in the inaugural season of it, and then it's still going on, and it's gained so much traction in the UK, and other teams are having it now, and it's it's well, and then like a Zach, non-issue, like, right? Like Zach. Like he's a player that yeah. came out openly and he did it on a pride night in the UK. Right. Yeah. Like for him to feel comfortable and like, I don't know. I think it's still stupid that that guy can't come out till a couple of years ago and that he's living a different life and a lie his whole life. Cause he doesn't want to tell people, but like, yeah. And like when you're on a hot, when you're on a hockey team and like, you know, everything about each other, it's like how you can't, you got to yeah. like let us know just so we can be a part of it. Like, we don't care. Like do whatever you got to do, man. But like, we're your brothers, right? Yeah. And like, good for him to come out and, you know, it takes obviously a lot of courage for him to do that. And I was being the first one in the UK and I know, uh, you know, there's old rugby players that have done it, obviously um, like Gareth and, but like no real active players, right. have come out in the UK and a major sport and, Obviously, we think hockey is a major sport in the UK. I don't know if people in the UK think hockey is a major sport, but <laughs> only in you know, certain to be able cities. To, <laughs> yeah, to be able to do that and you know just progress, like like it shouldn't be an issue, but somehow it is. And for him to feel comfortable doing it and, and putting it behind yeah. him, it's great for him. And it's no, I'm great I, for, to be honest, know, I'm proud of you for taking the initiative and saying something. Like I I think it's great. I think people should be who they are. And uh, it's like me with this, like, you know, you're like, geez, like, there's so much you want to talk about. And you're like, well, nobody would want to listen to me on here. But like, you have on so many fun people. And like, I don't know, I guess the support is kind of weird. Like, you know, just be yourself. And like, ain't that bad. (laughs) Yeah, be yourself. And people are going to like you, they're going to like you. Right. Like and you, can, you can't be so worried there. about what everybody's got to say. Right. Like, it's like, like 
starting this was a big thing for me because it was like the first time I was like, well, yeah, like I'm not for everyone. I'm, you know, I, I am who I am and I think what I think. And I was like, you know what? I don't think I have a bad thought in my head. I don't think I'd say anything stupid on here. I just want to have my friends on to talk about hockey. And I, you know, I don't think I'd put anybody in a bad spot with what they would say or what I would say. I think it will all go fine because like, we're not bad people. We are who we are. Right. Yeah. And you're not going to be for everyone. And nobody is. No, nobody is. You might as well have fun doing something. Yeah, and I am. Thanks so for doing I, this, buddy. It's been so fun to catch up. Yeah, how often can you get in the shed? And if only there was a place we could go, like in Blue Mountain or something, and like just spend a night away. And- well, like to stay in Blue.ca, we're still waiting for the, the Wally 20 code to work on the website. So I haven't really been talking about it lately because they told yeah. me the code wasn't working. So I didn't want to bring it up because what's the point if it doesn't work? Well, then let's just stick with uh, Bayside Brewery and Bayfield, a few beer. Bayfield, Bayfield, Bayfield Brewing Company. And um, I got mixed Bayfield, up with Ontario, and it's fantastic. But don't know. Thank you for bringing them up again because they're the best. I, I got mixed up with a uh, Blenheim, a hometown. Uh, oh, Blenheim. In laws hometown. Bayside is a brewery down there. But, you know, yeah. a lot nope. different. Um, I'm trying to think what else I got here for you, but. Um, it probably would have been important playing with your bro in Cardiff and, um, like you didn't just convince Todd to sign you and like your brother is obviously a very good player, but like he signed in Cardiff too. Um, so Lordo didn't just get one Hotham. He got two. I don't know what your brother's like. I don't know what, how, if he played fat boy every time Lordo came in or not, (laughs) he might be the complete opposite person to I am. He's still, uh, sorry, Ash is leaving the house. He, uh, I had a, tell Ash I say hi, by the way. I will. She, uh, she left Marv, uh, sitting by the door waiting for, but I don't know how many times I had to tell Wardo, listen, my brother and I are not alike. You can sign him. And he's like, he didn't believe me. Like he had a call, like, cause he had a chance to sign him the year before and, and didn't because he thought he was going to another, me chirping him all the time but my brother like he'll come to the rink he'll keep his mouth shut he'll work and that's it like he's just he's there and he's going to go to work and he's going to do whatever he can and we're like we're similar style players but a little bit different um and like Lordo, Lordo was having none of it and i'm like listen like my brother wants to come this year he wanted to come last year he wants to come this year he wants to do his mba sign him and he's like, ah, oh, like, I don't know. Like, I can't handle both of you. Like, I'm like, just call around about him. He's not the same person as I am. Call him, talk to him. He's different. <laughs> and then I can't remember how it happened. Then they end up, uh, end up signing on it. Like, I think he ended up playing like six defensemen. He's like, he was in Europe for eight years playing in top leagues. And they just, uh, he ended up playing like, he was great. Cause like, he's your, he was getting fifth defenseman minutes when he probably should have been one or two. Yeah, you like guys arguably pretty, he's better than I were, am. So you guys were pretty good there for a while, but like when you've established yourself as the top left shot D man, like you and Richie were eating up a lot of minutes for other guys to come in and really get a lot. Like wasn't Gleason Fournier still on the team? Yeah. So and yeah, is your brother team. a left shot? No, he's a right shot. Okay. Well, then there's some opportunity for him, but with you and Fournier yeah. there, should be a tough sell. I know. Yeah. So he was a right. And I think they played as like one game together. Every time we play together, it was just uh, like we can't play together. You fight too much. We can't because you no, know, like, it's like my kids. I was trying to get them to brush your teeth tonight. No, like I, I get it. I know. Yeah. Can't do if it. If one guy, one guy hits me, he's going to fight them. And he's not a huge fighter, but. He'll fight when he has to. Because his little brother got hit. Yeah. And like, they're still like. But then you, so who's a better fighter? You or him? I'd say I'm probably a better fighter. I so fight at what age could does. you start beating him up? I still can't. He's He's got the old man strength that he just. But in hockey, you're a better fighter. In hockey. 
or if we just fought like we did as children i'd just kick them in the nuts and then run <laughs> away and lock the bathroom door and wait till mom got home <laughs> <laughs> that's dirty pool man you can't do that true story too <laughs> <laughs> So what happened next time Bob left? Oh, you probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Eventually Bob left again, right? But he is so patient. Like as a kid, he was like, I've broken a mini stick over his back. I've kicked him in the nuts. I've, you could do anything to him. And he took it. He got upset, but he was so patient. And he also just put up with my shit. How many like, years younger are you? Two years. Yeah, yeah. Colby can be quite patient as always sometimes. And then other times he's just like, come on. Like, yeah, I know I get yeah. it. But yeah, you know, he's always the big brother protecting me. And like, yeah, breaking mini sticks over his back. And he chased me to the bathroom while I hid, but he would never do anything. He just, then he would come down. And he, yeah, That's, the yeah. patience that man had as a child. <laughs> Really? I couldn't I couldn't imagine you rocking the boat at all. Can't imagine it. No. But then there's a quick story. When I was 15, I was playing in some charity tournament. My brother was watching. It was like this like small little half rink, three on three rink. And uh I dumped a puck in and the goalie would come out and play it. And every time the goalie would come out and play, I'd slash the goalie stick. So every time he'd like just when he was like shooting, trying to like get his stick to try to stop the puck. And the goalie's dad was on the team, like on the goalie's team playing. And he came up to me. And, like the kid was probably 15, like around the same age I was. And the dad was probably, I don't know, 40. And the dad, if you slash my son one more time, there's going to be a problem. So is that stubborn me. Yeah. So stubborn me as a 15-year-old, this 40-year-old man says it. I'm going to go out there and do it again. So I dump the puck in. I go and I slash the goalie stick and the dad drops his gloves and starts coming after me. Shut up. So my brother's in the stands and he comes running down. I end up just filling this dad in. He had <laughs> two black guys. <laughs> like his wife and kids were in the stands and his son's the goalie. And like I just filled him in. And uh, so, and then the guys, we get kicked out of the tournament. So we're leaving the, uh, the ice and my brother's just over the glass and he's just screaming at this guy. Like you get kicked out of the tournament for beating a dad up. Yeah. Cause we fought, right. <laughs> you weren't allowed. It's a charity tournament. You're not allowed to fight. <laughs> so my brother's just in there screaming at this guy who's 40 or something. He's like, you're fighting 15 year olds. He's like, and he's only 17 and he's just giving it oh, to this yeah. guy after the guy you guys walking away with two big black guys like the guy's taking enough enough beating he doesn't need you to add into it but like that's the stuff he didn't like that he wasn't patient with anything that happened to like his family or something oh yeah 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 but, no uh, he's got your back when it comes down to it yeah like that's oh, uh sure. yeah i yeah i could totally see <laughs> slashing that goalie stick the next time after the dad oh. word you you're like yeah buddy <laughs> We'll see what's up. Yeah. And then, oh, that's awesome. God, that well, makes me happy. We got in trouble with that rank. He ended up throwing, I can't remember if he threw a helmet at the guy too, because the guy tried to fight me. Because I may or may not have ran the goalie. This is a different, uh, different it's time. Hype. Yeah. It's hearsay, and, uh, really. I don't know if you would have. And then there's uh, one more story. There's a, there's a time in university. We had like this big pile and it was just a huge brawl. I'm on, uh, I'm like on my back and this guy's on top of me and my brother's on top of him because they played us together at university for the first like month. And then they, they had to stop. They separated us because they, we were just getting so much shit. And uh, so I'm like trying to like my old days, I'm like, I gouging this guy as he's on top of me and the guy's like screaming and he's like trying to punch me. So every time this guy, like he's on top of me, and every time he leans up to swing back, my brother's on top of him and he, my brother would clock him and then he'd go, go back down in pain. And then he'd come back up to punch me. My brother would clock him again. And he'd go back down. <laughs> huh, and you're, I gouged him. I was on top of me. I wanted him off of me. I agree. Yeah. It's not fun. It's not comfortable. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. happening. <laughs> um, you do what you have to do. No, that sounds like you and your brother have had a lot of adventures and like, it's pretty cool that you guys got to play together as much as you did. Um, yeah, so I think it was 
Yeah, there's not many brothers teams. that do that, like really. No, and that was always our goal. We always want to play together, and obviously being a Barry, and a couple months in, and that was it. So, so, what's that picture on your poster that um, Freeman Designs made out of Cardiff, Wales? Um, did he make? Uh, was what? that the picture is of you playing for Dusseldorf, and he's playing for someone else, right? Oh, that picture I sent you. Yeah, it's you and your brother playing against each other. We were standing there. Yes. Yeah, so that wasn't. Uh, Are you not on Dusseldorf? Yeah, that was just. Uh, uh, we played that. We ended up playing the exhibition game when I was in Dusseldorf. We went to Austria. And he was in Austria. And, uh, Who did he play he for in, in Austria there? Who was he playing for? That team is, uh, I think it was a V-Lock. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I, I don't know his career. It'd be nice to have him on. So tell him it's time for him to come on whenever um, we have time here. I'm sure he would love to go on. What does he got? He's How a, many? We, he's got a couple kids too, eh? Yeah, he's got two kids. Was it six and B3? Yeah, so he has a lot of time to pod. So we'll we'll yeah, make he, work, it a, he works from home. What else yeah, can he do? Well, we'll make it late night when the kids are in bed. It's all good. Yeah. Um, okay. I how long we've been going, what we were nah, we haven't been going that long. We can keep going, eh? I wanna know about um we talked about you shutting down already at that time. Um, but I there's another question about Cardiff I wanna know because you win defenseman of the year every year you play in the league. Um, usually in hockey, um, you go like up instead of just stay there. Um, so what, what made you stay? And were there any like enticing times where you're like, geez, maybe this is it. Maybe I should go move on. It's weird. So when I signed in Cardiff, I thought first year, that's it. I'm just going to play one year, get my MBA, move on. And then, I don't know, I like our team was so much fun to play with. I said the it same was, thing. Like, every guy, and other than Joey Martin getting his, uh, his spandex pants stolen and Tigsy getting a uh, uh, little net bag or whatever, laundry bag stolen. Like, every guy on that team was great. Like, we had so much fun. It was like... It yeah. was so nice going out. And uh, but you would have been just with Christian Brittick, and then all of a sudden you yeah. go to that. And it was the same for me, man. I had played for Christian Brittick too. And then yeah. I'd had a pretty deep, like a, a fun year in Denmark. We'd won the championship, but I wasn't asked back. So then I had a sour taste too. But like the Christian Brittick can put a real sour taste in your mouth with hockey and life. And um, then all of a sudden it's funny again, right? Yeah. Like I had a lot of like, I still had a lot of fun in Germany. The hockey part of it was horrible. Like it was just, it wasn't good. But Germany was awesome. And Dusseldorf like, would be awesome. Like the city was great. People like from Dusseldorf that I met in the city were great. All the teammates were like amazing. Like there wasn't, other than the one guy that ratted me out, being a little snake, everybody was good. Like it was, it was fun going to the rink. But like Cardiff was just, it was, you know, everybody's English speaking. Like it just made it a little bit easier. But everybody was fun going to the rink. Um, I don't know. Like, it was enjoyable, like, going, like, having a beer after a game and, like, sitting around in the dressing room for 45 minutes having beers. And, like, I ended up putting a bottle of rum in my stall. And, like, we would just – we would sit there, like, and shoot the shit for a couple hours. And we go down the bar. And, this is in Cardiff, right, in the BBT? Yeah. Like, it w- like because you, you were never a beer drinker. This is uh, two ales and hockey tails, but you're having your spiced rum like normal, right? With your Pepsi. Um, I am. But like, like, yeah, those nights after we'd win a game in the big blue tent, when it'd be a Sunday night and we'd all just sit there and like listen to you play music and we'd all, people would be dance. There'd be du- naked dudes dancing. There'd be guys doing whatever. But like then the George brothers would come in with a tray full of beer and it's like, well, this is the best party you could ask for in the whole world. You have some of the best people you could find in the entire world, all in one room at the same time. Yeah. I, it's actually insane. We haven't even talked about the George brothers yet. I, I, yeah, you're right. Well, though, like I listened to like, obviously their podcast and like, uh, those guys are legends. They're absolutely amazing. 
but I will give one little spin. I still remember when they first came to the apartment because we met each other out on the golf course, right? Like they already told you and told the listeners. And so they, I can't remember if it was after the first game or what it was. And like, Hendo's like, yeah, I, I invited the uh, George brothers back to the apartment. And I'm like, what the fuck are the George brothers? Like, like the guys from the golf tournament? Is that, is that yeah, what Yeah, they're like the guys. I'm like, those guys? I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden I come back to the apartment and they're there and there with Fat Allen in the, in the kitchen and, and their other buddy who passed away. But we're like, Thanks. and all of a sudden it was just like, what the hell? Who are these guys? Why are we in our kitchen? And then three minutes in, I think we were best friends. I definitely knew who they were right away. So and you weren't in their golf group that day? I was the group ahead of them, either ahead of them or behind them. So like, cause I knew like Hendo were, had the best day ever with them. And oh, like, he was having w- so much fun. Yeah. And then like, when we sat around with them and I'm like, geez, these guys are fun. Like, where am I? And like the hockey team's allowed to have fun here. Like we're actually allowed to like enjoy a golf tournament and have a few beers and like kick back and like get to know each other. Like this is living. Yeah. Like we hung out a lot at the golf tournament, but you know, like there's like a hundred people there and like, they're kind of like, you're just talking to so many people and then like you're drinking a bunch with them, but then you only see them like one night. So you don't bit. really like, so then you're like, okay, like I'll hang out with these guys tonight and I'll never see them again. Right. Like here's who but knows. Then when they're, it's different when someone actually comes to your apartment, when they actually come to your apartment, yeah. that's different. But like, as soon as you see them for three minutes, you're like, these guys are like the the, the yeah. best they're they're our brothers yeah. right yeah like these guys are the best ever like i <laughs> i love those guys to this day i, I can't wait to go back to cardiff to visit them and other people and like just i yeah. got a question i got a question yeah since you left has any has todd let anybody wear number 24 uh i don't think so i don't think anyone's had 24 well, he better not just say well, I'm assuming just because nobody wants to wear 24, but oh, I'm sure it's some strange point number, will but hear. strange number. But um, I would think that would be the next time you're going over there. But I, I mean, I only read the intro. I don't make those decisions. I was trying to convince uh, Todd uh, in the summer when I was trying to give him a, a player to go over there who ended up signing in Sheffield. But uh, he's like, Oh, like, you ever want to come over for a night? I'm like, well, I've been waiting for like a year now. You've given Wally a night. Like, where the hell's my night? Like, I want to go over there and have some drinks and I'm not going to spray paint myself, but I'll at least go over there and like drink with everybody. Well, the, like, well, the, the funny thing is, is you're not going to have to spray paint yourself. You'll have your jersey <laughs> go up and like, I'll be running around spray painted if let me come for it. But no, like um, I, I would think that would happen if you're the, you win defenseman of the year every year you're there, but I actually don't make those decisions. You know, I don't, I well, actually I, don't have, don't have like there, I, like I'm running out of ties at Cardiff here, man. Everybody's leaving. <laughs> I know. Well, I think you need to play a few more than four years for that to happen, but I'll at least go over there and I'll drop the puck and I'll give out the champagne to the man of the match and have oh, a few yeah. beers with, with the guys and just enjoy it. Right. Like, When a team that uh, does that, like, that's why you stay there four years, right? Even if you win defenseman of the year every year is because it was that much fun. And Todd is that big of a beauty. And that's why they recruit the teams they recruit. And like, you definitely should go back. Um, Like you're the one that deserves it. (laughs) Um, But like, can't you use your uh, 2.25% or whatever you got there? I was almost a 2.3% owner, but um you know what? Haven't heard much from them lately. You know, we, uh, you know, I, I should send the screenshot out below the 2.3% owner where he said he was just joking, but he was going to send me some, some like Cardiff devil stuff to wear in the pod. And I was like, well, I'll wear it. Yeah, for sure. Like, let's do this. And now I got my own hats and shirts, Todd. So you know what? You never did send it. Well, for a royalty, I guess you can send it. So you can get the, the microphone and go have some live uh, podcasts. <laughs> I would love to have live podcasts with like people in real life. It was fun seeing people in real life this Saturday with the guys I won the Southern cup with in junior B. You know what I think is a great idea 
is instead of the uh, whatever they have, the Neil Francis show before games, they bring Wally and Hoth back and we do a live podcast in the bar in Cardiff for two ales and hockey tails. Boom. Doesn't sound that bad, does it, Todd? Steve? I don't know. <laughs> or, or we do it from the top of the mountain in Switzerland with picks. I mean, it, I mean, the floor is yours, Todd. It's up to you. But um, no, I, I don't need anything. They've done enough for me. I think you should just go have a night and I'll, I, I don't need, you do your thing. You need to have a night just for you, man. Has well, someone's got to keep their clothes on and someone's got to take them off. Somebody's got to get the boys pumped up while you're doing your, your, your Q and a though. Right. And if Carl Hudson's not around take his clothes off, you're the next best thing. You're right. You are right. <laughs> um, okay. Winning with the Stony Key Creek generals. So uh, you, 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 were you a police officer at this point? You move back. Cause I know the routine you move back. You're lost. You don't know what you're doing. You're not part of a team. The fall comes around. You're like, holy moly, like hockey starting. I've never not yeah. started hockey at this time of year. And then you, you did sign up and become a police officer all that year. Uh, 2019. I think I, I started with 2019. police. So you, with Toronto. so you played senior hockey before that for a while yeah so in 2018 so right when i finished i applied to york region police and uh, they told me i wasn't allowed to apply without a full-time job and i'm like well i just kind of retired from hockey like that was my job and they're like no you haven't had a job for years you need a real job so really like, that doesn't sound like it makes sense with the your alumni or with your team photo there that doesn't seem like it makes sense they all seem to have just left hockey yeah, but that's Toronto police. Mm. York police are a little different. So they uh, they told me to go get a job. They told me to go get a security job, but I'm not getting a security job. So I ended up uh, applying for Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and I was in the accounting department. And well, well, finance, well. MBA finance, boom. Yeah, and uh, so I was the accounting bitch of the <laughs> department for uh, a few months, and it uh, didn't pay a lot. And so playing some senior hockey and, and making a little bit of uh, gas money on the, uh, the side kind of helped us uh, stay afloat. And then, uh, yeah, so I played the first year and we ended up going to the, what is it? what's the cup there? Yeah. What is it called? It's the, the yeah. The, uh, yeah. People know what it's called. You should know senior you won it. So we didn't win the senior A cup. So we won our league, which is only four teams. So like, oh, I thought you won yeah. the whole thing. So did Stony I not Creek see did. you win on TSN or something? I thought I watched you play on TV. So my brother actually won with Stony Creek in the finals for the senior A trophy. But that was the year before when I was still in Cardiff. So we actually, the next year when I was playing, we're going to go out there. But I got hired on, so I got. We were supposed to go out on the Friday or Thursday, and I started work on the Monday. So I'm like, I can't go. Like, I can't risk getting hurt. I can't do like. Yeah, it's just not on the this is train. this. Yeah, this is the rest of my life. I got to be there. Yeah. So I had to say, I'm not going out to play in the. Jeez. Uh, yeah. What's Alan it called? Cup. Alan, Alan Cup. Cup. Boom! You got it. Yeah. So uh, and then we ended up losing that year. I don't know when, and then. Uh, then I got hired on, did that, and then them playing the next year, they uh, they moved to Brantford, and they're like, uh, "Do you want to play?" And I'm like, "But yeah. Brantford already had a team." Yeah, but they folded a uh, year before, so Stony Creek just moved to Brantford because there's bigger fans. So they uh, they're like, "Yeah, you want to play?" I'm like, "Yeah, like I don't want to get hurt because I'm still on probation, like please." So like, if I get hurt and I can't work, like it's kind of a so they're like, okay, like we're starting playoffs. So you need to play at least two games or four games. I can't remember what it was. So I ended up playing the last two weekends of the season just so I can play playoffs. And then they canceled playoffs before we got to the Allen Cup because it's COVID. So it was kind of a. So do you think you will play when it fires back up? Are they going to have senior A hockey once I COVID's done? 
I don't know. I, I don't know if the league's folded. I don't know if they're going on. I'm, I I'd probably go back and play. Like I want to play every week because I work every other weekend. So I play when I can. But well, yeah, the, the just rip, for fun. Like the Ripley Wolves are always looking for guys. You know, if you want to make it the drive. <laughs> <laughs> Seems uh, a little far away. Yeah, I would agree. Um, you get Marshy to come play with you. I'll I'll carpool with him because I'm not too far <laughs> from him. No, I actually got cut from them. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, so it's tough, tough to recruit when you got cut. <laughs> so you you're kind of sore subject right now. Yeah, we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It's okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, well, I I'm trying to think. Like we talked about Christian Brittig. We talked about the whole career. Um, any like good stories, like all these championships you won, like you won a lot, man. Like you won a lot of stuff. Is there any like good story from like when you won a championship, or, like things getting carried away or anything or no? Uh, well, I'm trying to think like when I won in tier two, I was. You won in tier and, two as well. Yeah, I won the for uh, who? The Aurora Tigers. So whole. So you actually did win everywhere. So I didn't know you won there too. Um, yeah, what's it called? It's very interesting though. Like and, and like so when you your skating isn't uh, say Gleason Fournier esque, um, <laughs> but like you just do it like you don't have to skate that good when you just do it and like when nobody can take the puck from you and then like if anybody pissed you off you just beat them up like <laughs> and then yeah one thing i did want to say which i almost forgot was you almost you scored like pretty well 20 goals a year and you never i don't think i've ever seen you take a slap shot well i think it's about as hard as my backhand so I don't think it's ever worth taking a slap shot. Just twisted wristers everywhere, eh? Just off speed. Nobody's ready for the off speed pitch. Just this, throw it in there and see what happens. Just throw it through everybody and it finds its way. That's it. People tipping it. You have some. Uh, you didn't really shoot it high either, did you? Will Blocker, old man's corner. It's the place to go. Really? I was a high no. glove guy. Well, oh, but you're a righty, like a lefty. If you go old man, like that's your, it's perfect. No, you're angle. right. You're right. Old lefties always corner. went low blocker and righties go high glove. Yep. You're right. High glove. You're fancy. Wow. And then the goalies gloves get too good. And then you're like, geez, tough to be a righty anymore. <laughs> get a little confidence. Don't you remember the, uh, the old mighty ducks movies? When he's well, like, of course I would still watch them. When Julie, the cat went in there and, uh, like, Made one save. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna do the triple deke, and uh, he's like he'll shoot high glove, and uh, she's like, oh, like how do you know it's high glove? Like he's fancy, he'll go high glove, and he shoots high glove, and she stops it. Well, it's because he's a righty, right? Was he? I can't remember if he was a righty or not. Are you that. saying I was fancy? Is that why I was shooting top glove? Because I was fancy. I, Is that what you're, say you're saying? A fancy player. A few toe drags, a few stick handling within the phone booth. I, I would I'd say, say I'd like to fancy. put it between my legs and do spin a Rooney. So, yeah, I would say I was a bit of a fancy boy. <laughs> you weren't a dump and chase type guy. I'd say you're a fancy guy. Yeah, you're right. No, I dump and chase. Like, if you can't skate, she's a tough game to play. <laughs> Why would you get the puck off your stick when it's on a string? Just keep the puck on your stick and oh, have a good yeah. time. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um no, so anyways, do you got anything else for me before we shut her down? I think we've gone a long time, and it is hot as balls in the shed, and oh. I'm sweating like up. Can we – let's talk about one more thing before you go, because you kind of oh, brushed dear. over with Hendo. So oh, do you remember when Hend Hendo and I lived together? Yeah. And we had the George brothers and uh, Fat oh, Allen. Oh, we hardly and... talked about the George brothers, but yeah, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. And I beat Fat Allen in NHL 14 or whatever it was, and then he just – he refused to play against me anymore. But, uh, you know, George Brothers speak for themselves. I love those guys. They talk about the podcast and all the rapping and they've done and all the fun that we've had together. So I won't 
best retell guys all ever. the stories. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Best guys ever. But like so much fun in Cardiff. One of the reasons why I love Scar- Cardiff so much is because and why you, you know, resign there, right? Like literally, that they do influence resigning in Cardiff because for sure they do. You know Those how much walked, fun you're gonna have hanging out with them. They, they walked him to the dressing room with a huge tray of beers. They ended up on the ice on all our championships. I, I still remember though. I'm, I think I told you about the oh, always yeah. like seeing them on the ice, and like the one we won in Cardiff. The was first the, year when I was on the team, like you yeah. were celebrating with them, like as much as with the team, like you skated yeah. to them when they got the ice and you were like, we did it. Like they were yeah. our brothers. They were just, they were, they were the team. They were on the team. Like there was oh. no two ways about it. They were just on the team. Right. And like, like my wife still like, she loves, loves them. Like every so often she'll just FaceTime them. And it's like four in the morning there. And, like Steve's just waking up and like Chris doesn't even answer because he can't hear it with the size of his head and, <laughs> and the phone right next to him. And like Ash is just like so excited to see them and like talk to them and they're like, okay, like, you know, we gotta work tomorrow in the morning. Like, can we call you later? And like, yeah. But they'll like, always awesome pick guys. up the phone and they'll always do anything always. for anybody. Like they are the best. But I think uh, you were gonna you were gonna talk about something else before we brought them so, up again. Let's talk about because yeah, you brushed over with your podcast with Hendo. Oh, now, we would go out on Sunday nights, and we weren't too far away from you. Yep. So oh, were you talking morning, about when I would wake you guys up? So not only would you wake us up, Colby <laughs> would come in, and we had Jenga there, and we had I don't know what he would absolutely destroy our apartment. Everything would be thrown everywhere, and I'm like. And like we're hungover shit, don't want to see this. He's banging pots, he's throwing stuff on the ground, and then you're like, "All right, guys, I'm out of here." I sit there and look at Hendo. I'm like, "Is he gonna pick this shit up?" I'm like, "Wally, pick up after your son." And you're like, "Okay, I'm out." And then we'd sit there for the next half an hour picking up the Jenga pieces and putting stuff back together. Oh, whatever. You had like food beside your bed and like Pepsi bottles. So, oh, always. <laughs> And then I still remember coming home from school and you'd be like, I'm just going to come in for a second. I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden you'd go in the secret cupboard there and you'd find, uh, I don't know if it was your chew you were hiding from Lisa. No, or I don't Hendo's chew. That. I don't use that stuff. Never have. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm just going to take some of this. And then you'd walk out and you're like, you know what? I can take a beer for the trip too. Like where's <laughs> Hendo's beer. And then you grab one of Hendo's beer. And it's like, you know what? That's not going to last me. So you take two and then you just walk away. I'm like, all right, so I guess uh, I guess Wally's gone. So he comes this morning, he destroys the entire apartment with, with Colby, and then he just comes and takes all Hendo's beer and chew. I'm like, all right, well, good to see you, Wally. He's like, I'm going to go parent. I'm like, all right. I'm going to go to bed now, I guess. Get back to bed. <laughs> yeah. No, it was uh, – yeah, it was uh, – I, I would get so angry that you guys would all get to go out and have fun. And I was like a grown up and it sucked. Oh, I, I still don't think we like, we cleaned up all those Jenga pieces from that apartment. Cause they were you're everywhere. Right. You're right. No, you're right. You're right. It was tough decision that that was the way we woke you up. Cause like I knocked over the tower one day, but like who leaves the Jenga table, like with it, the tower standing up. Right. Sorry. It was a drinking I, game with the George brothers. <laughs> well, you guys, it was time to wake up. It was like the morning. It was like 8, 9 a.m. Like adults get up at that time. It's funny. Like, I, uh, well, obviously, I'm a nine month, 19 month old now. And like, I don't know how you ever did it because <laughs> I drank one night and I woke up at seven in the morning. Ash wakes up. She's like, she's a killer mom. She wakes up all the time with Huddy and like, lets me like sleep in bed till 7 45 8 o'clock but, like the one day i was so hung over i think we had a few drinks with uh with marty and uh and his girlfriend and and huddy when uh like carl when he was living with us and uh so i get up and i'm like okay so like i just put on cartoons and i'm just sitting on the couch laying there hung over eyes closed and hudson's just whacking me he just wants to have fun He's like pulling toys out. He's throwing them at me. He's screaming. He wants the vacuum out because he loves the vacuum. 
And I'm like, oh my God, now I know how Wally felt all those mornings. That's why he just brought Colby over to wake us up because he got a second rest. I mean, you put him in the stroller, you go for a walk, and then you're like, okay, bud, get out, terrorize these two, like just terrorize them. And then we'll have a laugh and then we'll go to the park. (laughs) Um, But no, like it's, it's interesting now because like now my kids wake up and he plays Fortnite and she does whatever. And it's like, well, like (laughs) you used to need me, (laughs) you know? Yeah, no, they dude. just don't want anything to. You just no, they're just growing now. up too fast. It just sucks. It sucks, man. They grow up too fast, and then you're like, "Holy shit, that means I'm old." Yeah. Now you just got to do the kicking and screaming. Uh, Will Ferrell at the soccer games. Start throwing the chairs and start screaming away. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty calm around soccer fields. I was there tonight with Zoe. I was pretty calm. Um, her effort wasn't the best, but you know what. <laughs> She was pretty cute out there, even if she didn't really try. <laughs> hey, she's got to look cute. You never know when Lee Salter is going to come around. So, well, she can't contain herself. She never has been able to since she was a baby. But then again, <laughs> none of her wives could. So, you know what? Enough's enough. It's true. They, I heard about the 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 female the the wives parties back um, in Cardiff when he joined the team. They just. That's what they would talk about was like, geez, this guy's really good looking, but he was. Yeah. yeah. And what he had the body do? to back it up. Right. And like when you're five, eight on good days and five, seven on bad days, and you got a bit of a muffin top, you do the best you can. Right. Yeah. There's a reason I have the camera just from chest up. Cause the no, spare tire is really fine. growing down here. Oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I think the pet. The Pepsi's are catching up to me. Pepsi's are they? Pepsi's? Well, they catch up to you eventually, you know. And then, yeah. then what? When they catch up to you eventually, all you gotta do, hit the shed, start drinking beers, <laughs> exactly. lean you right out. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> and especially such great beers too. Well, exactly. Um, well, I would say this has been. Thank you for coming on and having um, the longest intro ever for winning the most stuff and the most awards. Um, And it's been great catching up with you. So thank you for coming on, sir. All right. Thanks for having me, Wally. And I'm, I'm looking forward to having your old man on and your brother at some point. Okay. I'm sure they will. And the old man's the uh, president of the uh, Leaf alumni now. So. Holy moly. That'd be a big get. Jeez. Who knows? He might might make me legitimate. And this has been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Marv and Wally.